Okay, Julio, Oscar, then you need a record in Camerino. I gave you the fights in the dressing room. I want a good clean fight, una pelea limpia. Desa la mano, yo bendiga los dos. Tim Ryan, Gil Clancy, Sean O'Grady, ready for the main event for the WBC Super Lightweight Championship. Will it be Chavez, the champion there, or the young challenger, Julio Cesar Chavez? 12 rounds from now or less, we'll find out. The referee, Joe Cordes, calls for the opening bell. Oscar de la, so de la Hoya said, I must take control early in this fight. I must show him I'm the boss in the first round. Show him what I'm there to do. He's shorter, so my height and reach must steer him. Oscar De La Hoya, and you see the movement already in this opening round from him, trying to circle away from that left hook. Most of the power of Julio Cesar Chavez is in that left hand. Pull that power away by moving to your left. Julio Cesar Chavez rocking the house, wants this place to be known as Julio Cesar's Palace. Thousands of people came here from Mexico, crossing the border to come and cheer on the legendary champion. Of course, he has many, many fans among the Hispanic community in this country and around the world. Oscar De La Hoya trying to develop that same following that Chavez has so well earned over 99 professional fights, losing only once. Oh, yeah, a lot of respect from both fighters. Chavez describes himself now more relaxed, more defense in his style. He says a strong boxer blood. puncher. John, excuse me, there's already. some blood already at the corner of the left eye of Chavez. Wow. And it, it must have been opened by a blow. They have not been close enough to bang heads that I recall in this opening minute. There's another right hand by De La Hoya, and he's brought more blood from the cut. Already a cut. De La Hoya slices with his punches. He turns his thumbs over right at the end, right at the point of impact. The glove twists, and that leather on this hot night here in Las Vegas just rips the face apart. Well, nobody will want to see this fight determined by a cut this early. And Chavez's face rapidly becoming a mask of blood here in the first oh, round. It is nasty. An ugly cut over the eye, underneath the eyebrow. And Tim, what Chavez is doing, now he's backing up. And as Oscar De La Hoya told us, he can't fight backing up. Joe Cortez calls for time to have the doctor come in and look at the cut. Oh, it's a bad cut. What a turn of events in the opening seconds of the fight. Right through the eyebrow. Look at the cut there. Oh, really ugly. They're going to let it continue, but that blood will no doubt run into the eye, impairing the vision of Chavez. But again, Chavez is standing too straight up. He has to get low against a tall guy like Oscar De La Hoya. However, at this point, he might just want to get back to his corner to see what they can do on that cut. Well, he has to wait for the belt to ring, Sean, so he has to use some strategy in the meanwhile. Sure, look how low that left hand is, Gil. Left hand down by his waist. And his legs are straight. He has to bend those legs. Good focus by De La Hoya. He's stalking Chavez. Very calm, very relaxed. Chavez with his very relaxed demeanor coming into this fight. Now we'll have to fight more out of desperation because of that serious cut. And you can see uh, how much bigger De La Hoya looks than Chavez. Than Chavez. Chavez waving him in, trying to draw De La Hoya into a slugfest. Blood all over the face of Chavez. Wow. What an opening round. In the corner of Chavez, his father Rodolfo, trainer Jose Martin, Jose Daniel Castro will work desperately trying to stop this cut. And Tim, it's, it, it is a very, very bad cut. It took them 20 seconds to get the school, the stool into the ring. Yeah. They should have been working on that, on that the second the bell rang. Yeah, they have some cut medicine in that towel. There they're applying some grease over the top of the Vaseline, trying to smooth down the rough edges. Well, they should also, they should also put something ice cold on there, trying to close those blood vessels. Not used to seeing their champion cut early. Has not had too many occasions where he has been affected by cuts. Not all, they did a nice job cleaning that cut up in the one-minute rest period. 
Round number two. Oscar Del Ore on the right of your screen. The taller boxer with the blue trim in his trunks. Chavez, Chavez wobbled. And a warning there by Joe Cortez for grabbing behind the head. Yeah, but you try to steer with that left jab. Now, all of a sudden, both fighters have to change their strategy. Julio Cesar Chavez says he has only one style, that is to hit and not get hit. Oscar De La Hoya says that he has 10 different styles. He's been watching tapes of Sugar Ray Robinson, Willie Pep, some of the great fighters of old, Sandy Sadler. He has all those styles to choose from. He also told us that this is going to be a fight with the Matador against the Bull. He's the Matador. I said, yeah, but it's the only time that I know that the Matador is bigger than the Bull. Yeah, but now he's having to change that because of that cut. He's in the jab effectively. De La Hoya here in the second round. And again, he mentioned that Chavez can't fight backing up. And Chavez is not bending, not trying to get underneath De, De La Hoya's punches. He has to move in underneath and try to come up with that left hook, as he's trying to do now. He's got him backing up, backing up his face a crimson smear. As fighters age, the oil comes out of their skin. They don't have as, it's not as flexible as earlier in their careers. Consequently, fighters who are aging, like Chavez, have to move a lot, keep from getting hit. Good Chavez has always been very tough. De La Hoya landed a good left in the oh. left. Chavez lunging in. And lands a left. Trying to make something happen. So far, De La has been able to keep him at bay. It doesn't hurt to get cut like that. It just throws you out of your game plan. All of a sudden, you have to deal with that cut. See him wiping at the eye? Area, very patient. Well, the referee did not indicate that it was a butt. Otherwise, if we may have gone to the scorecards, it would have been a technical draw. Should it be stopped? Should it be stopped? It was a clean, yes, if it, if it was stopped. But it was a clean punch, as far as I was concerned. Yes, and that's all we could see in round one, and we'll have a look at it between oh, oh, rounds. What intensity. Tremendous concentration on the part of Delaware. Oh, yeah, both fighters. Round number one, Chavez threw 18 punches, landed six. De La Hoya threw 52, landed 17. And he caught Chavez leaning in with a short chopping left. And again. Oh, look at the head down from De La Hoya. He's taller than most other super lightweights, but he keeps his head so low. He tucks that head down to hide that chin. Chavez, oh, blood. Chavez managed to get a left hand in in the last few seconds. And Chavez went to the wrong corner. Yeah, he's hurt. When you get when you get knocked uh, silly, when you get knocked, when you get hurt, you know, a little bit unconscious, but not out. He lose your sense of direction. Let's go back and see the punch from round one that opened the cut. Yeah, watch this. Uh, set up with the jab, and I'm looking for the right hand, but it was that appeared to be that jab. It was to the first jab, and then he was accurate in in landing the left jab in exactly the same spot the second time. So a pair of left jabs, one opening the cut, the second one right behind it. Vamos a conectarle. And it's an angry it's looking looking cut, but the corner did a good job at the end of round one. There's no question that has affected the attacks of Chavez. Oh, yeah, it just throws you off your game plan, too. All of a sudden, you have to worry about the cut and about the referee stopping the fight. Julio Cesar Chavez was real upset that Joe Cortez got the assignment for this fight. He said Cortez worked his fight with Frankie Randall and Pernell Whitaker, and he thinks Cortez doesn't like him. Delaware has been the busier of the two boxers through two rounds, as you can see. We've given the first two rounds to him on our score card. But again, it doesn't seem to me as if Chavez has any game plan at all. He's standing straight up against a much taller opponent where he should get lower. Maybe that would give him an advantage. And now he's trying to box something that he does not do well. You can see Ch uh, Delaware extend his arms every time Chavez comes forward, something he told us he would do to try to keep Chavez off him. Well, you know, Tim, he seems so much bigger and stronger than yeah. Chavez. You have to remember the way in. The weigh-in was yesterday. I would have to say that De La Hoya weighs at least 147 pounds right now. Well, that, that, that height. 139 at the official weigh-in. That height really helps him 
and that he can punch down on his opponents. The two sparred six years ago, and Julio Cesar Chavez knocked down a 17-year-old Oscar De La Hoya. Because of that, Julio Cesar said, I don't need to watch training tapes of him. I haven't seen him recently. I know that I have the power. I know he's tasted my, t my power, and he's not going to want to taste it again. I think that was a little uh, verbal bravado from Chavez, and uh, hard for me to accept that he didn't look at tapes and was counting on somebody from uh, age 17 in 1989. In the meanwhile, so far, this fight has been a fight with the one punch has been the effective punch. It's been De La Hoya's jam. That's for sure, and there is blood all over the face of Chavez again as the cut has opened up badly. Oh, yeah, a little maneuver. So, yeah, that just shows the power and the balance of De La Hoya. Okay, you push around your opponent where you want him. Make it, let him know you're in control. That's Chavez what De La Hoya is going to do. Short left hook by Chavez. Best punch of the fight. Now he's starting to try to come in low, which he should have been doing from the beginning. Now he's back straight up again. Yeah, he doesn't want to stand out at the end. He's not as tall as De La Hoya. So he's got to get down, get low, attack underneath, attack at the angles. We're in round number three, scheduled for 12. So far, the, the blood has not appeared to have been a big factor in his vision, but if it continues to bleed freely, it will be at some point. Well, well yes, it, it will. It takes a little time for that medicine to take hold, Tim, and now it is starting to take hold because it's not bleeding nearly as badly as it had been before. Final seconds of the third round. Oscar De La Hoya, another strong round for the challenger. The former IBF lightweight champion going for the title at 140 held by Chavez, WBC version. Stay with the left. And keep the right also. You can see and hear the instructions from Jesus Rivero outside the ropes in Del Arroyo. He calls him the old man. And in the Chavez corner, Jose Buffalo Martin handling the cut. He is the trainer and the cut man. A lot of responsibility on his shoulder. Oh, yeah, this is his reputation at stake. He has to keep that kept from bleeding. As long as it's not bleeding, they will not stop the fight. It starts bleeding down and hampering the vision of uh, Chavez. They'll stop the fight. Round four. Scheduled for 12. And Chavez comes out like a bull this time. That brings the crowd alive. They want him, the old warrior, to prevail against the young lion. Yeah, and he needs to. There's a left oh. hand by Chavez. And that crowd can propel you to victory. That crowd helps you because when you hear that crowd, it's deafening. And you think you're hurt a lot of times, even though you're not. Good left hooks from Chavez. His best punch is that left. De La Hoya still very patient, using the jab, keeping his distance. And again, Chavez is trying to fight, backing up. De La Hoya says, I know I can KO anyone, but tonight I just want to box. And given all of the things that have happened in Helio Cesar Chavez's career, I think that's good advice. And again, there's that educated left hand of Oscar De La Hoya constantly in the face of Chavez. Yeah, educated left hand is right. De La Hoya had been fighting his whole life. He had hoped to one day be a world champion and be in a fight of this nature. He comes from a boxing family. His grandfather was a boxer, Vincenti. His father, Joel, also was a fighter. And there was De La Hoya catching Chavez. Chavez trying to lunge forward. Yeah, De La Hoya is waiting for him to rush in. And nailed them pretty good. By far oh, the most the mature performance by Oscar De La Hoya that I've seen, and I've seen virtually all of his fights. In the fourth round here, he's already shown great maturity, and there is blood streaming again from the cut of oh, Chavez. I've had my eye on Oscar De La Hoya for a long time. He is a, an outstanding fighter. And another good left Chavez. hand inside, and another left hook outside from De La Hoya. 
Oh. And a combination scored by Del Oya. And another combination punishing Chavez. Uppercuts. Chavez Over. under. Chavez is now bleeding from the nose as well as the eye. I remember De La Hoya. De La Hoya pouring it on. Chavez now not Look at that nose. Look at the nose. That's worse. His nose is worse than his eye. In his last fight, he broke, broke his opponent's nose. Blood yeah. pouring from the nose and the eye. And Joe Cortez calls a halt. He'll have the doctor look at this cut. Dr. Flip Pomansky comes up from the far side. Also cut inside the mouth. Every time De La Hoya punches, he spins right on the end, huh? and it slices it. the face. That's, That's it. it. Say something else. It is all over. Jose De La Hoya. Oscar De La Hoya. Pardon me. With Jose Rivero, the old man in his corner, exulting his victory. A fourth round knockout. A, a dominant performance by Oscar De La Hoya over the legendary Julio Cesar Chavez. What a performance. Oscar De La Hoya, oh, what a great feeling. To conquer somebody, he was a big fan of Julio Cesar Chavez. What a great feeling that is, but for Chavez, he's still wondering what happened. De La Hoya, he gets embraced by his corner people. A lot riding on this fight. A lot of pressure on his back. He had heard all the critics about his career when he walked through Rafael Ruelas, when he destroyed Gennaro Hernandez. Well, he Jesse Leja, Daryl Tyson. He broke Hernandez's nose, and from the report, I. I read he shattered his nose. It was broken in like in 20 places, and it looked like he did the same thing to Julio Cesar Chavez. Not only his nose, but also his eye and some blood from inside the mouth of Julio Cesar. Very mature performance yes. by Oscar De La Hoya. Was Very it? cool, great concentration, knew exactly what he had to do, really wasn't letting himself take chances, fought a great fight. And this crowd is stunned, shocked. Here's what happened at the end of the fight. Look at that stiff jab, jam set up everything. Punishment from Oscar De La Hoya while Chavez trying to fall in to get inside of that danger road zone, that 90% power zone. But then you De can see, see De La Hoya making him reach, stepping to the yeah. side. Sharpshooting and then stepping back, cracking and the there combination. He goes, there he goes away again. And no retaliation from Julio Cesar Chavez. Very mature, young, terrific performance by Oscar De La Hoya. He made it look easy. Referee Joe Cortez calls a halt to the bout. Dr. Flip Homansky has ruled that the former champion Julio Cesar Chavez was unable to continue because of severe lacerations to the eyes. The winner by technical knockout, winning his fourth world title belt and new WBC super lightweight champion of the world, the golden boy, Oscar De La for the championship of the world. I expect a tough, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Any questions from the challenger? The champion, let's get it on! The fighters did not look at each other during the pre-fight introductions. Whitaker looked to the side. De La Hoya stared straight up in the air skyward. Oscar De La Hoya's last fight right here at the Thomas & Mack Center in Las Vegas, January 18th, a 12-round decision victory over Miguel Angel Gonzalez. Pernell Whitaker, his last bout January 24th in Atlantic City, New Jersey, when he came from behind to knock out Diabella Sotano in 11 rounds. Here we go in round one. Whitaker has a very strange low crouch that he will often use, and it'll be interesting to see how De La Hoya tries to attack that here tonight. Whitaker will attempt to frustrate De La Hoya, give him different moves, throw punches at him from bizarre angles, and utilize the ring. He is not, as he has often been characterized, a runner. People are misled in that, uh, in that regard. 
Taylor Whitaker will outbox you, but he doesn't run from you. Now Pernell getting that jab to work. Nice jab by Whitaker. In early moments, at least controlled by the champion. He'll attempt to jab, come in on De La Hoya, and then move to the side. Turn him around. De La Hoya in a style that's become familiar for him in his last few fights. Trying to keep his opponent at a distance by holding that left hand out. Whitaker's jab surprisingly effective here in round one. De La Hoya wild with his return forward. Whitaker right in front of De La Hoya, but that's his history. He's right in front of you, but he's hard to hit. Until the last couple of years, Pernell Whitaker rarely lost a round in his career. De La Hoya missing with the uppercut. De La Hoya's been wild and appears a little bit tight here in the early going. Hey, 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 hey. Now there's a hit on the, on the break by Whitaker. And a run in return from De La Hoya. Most lane warns the fighters. De La Hoya, at least so far, does not look relaxed to me. Now he gets the jab to work, which he may need to do to get himself into a uh, tempo here. Combination by De La Hoya, and now the action begins. Hit him with a straight right that time. Terrific left hook to the body by Pernell Whitaker. Whitaker got all of his punching power into that left hook, and De La Hoya took a backward step after that body shot by Whitaker. Well, Whitaker's jab has looked terrific so far here in round one. It's off the jab that he sets everything up, Rich. And there you see he gets it. If he gets it going early. A little bit of the trickiness of Pernell Whitaker, as you see, as he marched back a few steps. De La Hoya having trouble connecting here in round one. And a first round largely controlled by Pernell Whitaker. Más cintura, Chan. No, no te aceptes esa pelea, Chan. Perdón, voy a salir del ring. Okay. That he's too upright, that he has to bend at the waist more. We go into round two. I thought De La Hoya looked very tight in that first round. Certainly did. He needs to relax. Whitaker was just Whitaker in round number one. Right? He won it on my card. combinations when Whitaker gets close. And once again, Whitaker right in front of him. But De La Hoya can't hit him. There's the jab by De La Hoya, which was so effective against Miguel Angel Gonzalez. It was shocking in that first round to see him out jabbed by Whitaker. His jabs against southpaws don't often work as successfully as they do against orthodox fighters. Man, man, that jab of Whitaker is finding a hole in De La Hoya's face. That's a jackhammer. There weren't many people who thought that Whitaker could defeat Julio Cesar Chavez. And while it was called a draw, basically he did defeat him that night. Look at Whitaker. That even draws a smile from De La Hoya.
unique style Pernell Whitaker has. And it's frustrating, too. And you know, one of the problems about that is, Rick, is you can't find really sparring partners who can mimic Whitaker effectively when you're trying to train for him. That's absolutely correct. Whitaker, a one of a kind. As he said, Delaware has not seen his likes ever. Remember, Pernell Whitaker in his career has been involved in 21 title fights and 14 of them against number one contenders. So he is accustomed to being in situations that are difficult. And even on a couple of occasions where he was not expected to win. Delahoy trying to cut the distance down. Whitaker has done an effective job, and they're flailing away with the left hand as Pernell Whitaker. Trying to get his right hand home to the body, trying to attack with straight right hands and coming a little bit faster here at Whitaker. Delaware comes into this fight saying that he has five or six different game plans, if you will. He may need them all before it's over with. Those punches largely ineffective. Crowd Ward, there's a right hand on the top of the head by De La Hoya. But De La Hoya beginning now, it seems like, to get a little more relaxed and is closing those last 30 seconds of the distance and fighting a little bit better. And a good right hand to end the round for De La Hoya. Beautiful round, okay? Do not just take, don't let this kid take the play away from you. You two up, Ron. Huh? Yeah, baby, we are right, we are right. You know, hey, double up that jab. Who's the first four? Yeah, yeah, you're not the first four. The first hey. four is your go fight. You got to right? double up that jab and go to the body. Don't be afraid to hurt this guy. Hurt this guy on the yeah. inside. Every now and then, people, when he gets close, steal it with that left hand. I will. All right, the left hand is right there, All right. okay? But the jab, just remember, just snap the jab and step around. Keep stepping around. All, right. All this kid is trying to hit you with the right hand. Now, as soon as you get in the inside, now he's finally throwing up the uppercut. Yeah. As soon as you get that first, yeah. let you do first with the uppercut. Then go to the body second. Second side. Right, very clear instructions in the corner for Pernell Whitaker. There you're looking at Oscar De La Hoya, who turned pro in November of 92 and won his first title in March of 94. De La Hoya in the red trunks, Pernell Whitaker in the purple. I'm sure they're both familiar enough that they really don't need any identifying to you around the world. I thought De La Hoya came back enough in that last minute to win the second round. I did too, Rich. And I thought he began to loosen up a little bit there at the end of the first and the end of the uh, round. So I had to fight even through the first two rounds. And it appeared that De La Hoya was able to close the distance between them. Pernell Whitaker with a couple of good punches in that exchange. Of course, Pernell's so tricky inside that even if you close the distance, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get to it. De La Hoya trying to pick up, I think, the pressure level here that he's applying to Whitaker. Whitaker was taking the play away from him in the first round and a half with a good jab. De La Hoya attacking with a straight right. De La Hoya with some good defensive movement to escape those punches. those punches missing. I say De La Hoya's accuracy level so far through the first two and a half rounds until that punch has been lower than at any time in his career. Now Whitaker spins him around, but De La Hoya had landed his hardest punch of the fight just before that. Oscar said all along that if Whitaker was going to get cute in the ring, he'd get cute right back, and you can see him showing no respect to Sweet Pea. Whitaker, eyes open wide. They look like doorknobs. Gives him a little hip shake. Good short right hand by De La Hoya in that exchange. And now did you see him scrape his glove across De La Hoya's face? And Mills Lane right there, he saw it. We're inside the final minute now of round three. Good left hit to the body by Whitaker in a clash of heads. And now De La Hoya's on the receiving end of another shot by Whitaker. He comes forward. That's a De La Hoya goes down to the canvas. Let's see what Mills Lane calls it here. I think he's caught under his right eye. No knockdown. De La Hoya is cut. De La Hoya is cut under the eye. And Mills Lane is calling a headbutt right now. He's calling a headbutt, so that means that the accidental foul rule comes into effect. And remember, under WBC rules, you have to complete four rounds. The cut, however, is...
is underneath the eye. It is not in a dangerous spot. But there's going to be some concern about De La Hoya in that corner. It looks as though neither guy is afraid of the other. Oh, the left uppercut by De La Hoya. That one rocked Whitaker back. Another left hook by De La Hoya, and Whitaker fell back. Whitaker seemed to have the round sewn up until De La Hoya landed those two big shots near the end of the round. That was one tough round to call, Rich. ahorita no se trata del poder a poder déjalo que te siga boxearle un poco un poco retrocede hazlo fallar le das un paso lateral y lo ya veas de la Hoya has one of the best cut men in the business Chuck Bodak in his corner here's the head but you can see Whitaker coming in that that causing the cut underneath with uh, de la Hoya's right eye well there's no question about it it was he came right at him Here's the left uppercut. And again, Whitaker coming in with his head. Round four of an increasingly tension-filled and exciting fight. Those who felt it might be such a chess match that there were few punches thrown have definitely been proven along so far. There seems to be a little bit of a mouse over the right eye of Whitaker at this point, which I don't know if you can tell. All right, that could have also been caused by the headbutt. Remember now, the head, the cut is under the eye of De La Hoya. I thought that Whitaker was on his way to winning that last round, but De La Hoya landed some tremendous shots in the last 30 seconds of that round and may have stolen it on the judges' cards. But one big left uppercut was a beauty. De La Hoya beginning to get into a rhythm, it appears like, and is loosening up some. There's the right. De La Hoya can fight going backwards as you see him getting back up. Good right hand inside by De La Hoya to the head of Whitaker. Mills Lane lets them fight inside while they had arms free. It is really impossible off of what we've seen through the first three rounds plus to pick a winner right of this fight right now. It's amazing, Rich, how, how well Whitaker thrives on his awkwardness and his ability to escape punches. Whereas in his last fight, De La Hoya was enjoying a 64% effectiveness rate with his jab. I think it's hardly that here tonight. No, no, it has no, been nowhere near as effective. But then again, he's jabbing against the southpaw. And jabbing against the southpaw is not usually as effective as it is against an orthodox fighter. It's a whole different story. That hand, that glove is right out in front of you to block that jab. But if De La Hoya can start to get the jab home, then it could spell doom for Whitaker. The action slows a bit here in round four. Whitaker has really yet to throw a significant punch in this round. Missing all those punches. A little fancy footwork from Cornell. And De La Hoya with some defensive maneuver. De La Hoya may win this round on pure aggressiveness, even though it hasn't been effective aggressiveness, because Whitaker has hardly landed a punch of his own in this round. A good body punch by De La Hoya. We've seen precious little of that from Oscar so far. And the bruising around the right eye of Whitaker is becoming more common. Whitaker clowns, but probably lost the round. I'd agree with that wholeheartedly. De La Hoya coming on strong near the end, putting his punches together. Nothing that landed solidly, but enough to give him the round. Okay, now. Right? 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 Right?
Switching to southpaw here. Able to get inside, which is what Rivera wants him to do. And although he didn't land anything of stunning nature, he was able to get closer to Brunel, and that's what he wants to do. We have now been told as we begin round five that Whitaker had a point deducted from him for that headbutt. In round three, so keep that in mind in your score. Throw the hole fast, but again, missing most of those punches. He may want to work to the body a little bit more. Oh, a great right hand from Whitaker. A terrific combination by Whitaker, which was climaxed by the right hand. A beauty. And De La Hoya, who had it so easy in victories against Paez, and no knockdown, and Ruelas and Chavez to win the three titles before is in a fight here tonight. It is still early enough in the in the fight which to think that Whitaker would still have his legs under him. But as the fight progresses that's going to be something to watch. Another beautiful right hand from Cornell Whitaker. Sweet be a little more economical in his punching than his De La Hoya but in this round, at least, he's been the more accurate of the two. De La Hoya thought by everyone to be the complete package. Quickness, tremendous punch, technique, much improved defense. Since adding Jesus Rivera as his trainer. It's a great drag jab, but it has not been a factor here tonight. So he needs something else to come to the fore for him. Whitaker sticking that jab out there. Landing frequently, too. Another beautiful right left cross by Whitaker, and he gets out of there after landing the punch. Whitaker enjoying a nice round so far. Now Whitaker getting cued again. Inside the final minute of round five. De La Hoya playing no notice to the cuteness, although there is wild. And, and Whitaker is hot dogging it pretty good here in round five. Well, he's not going to get any points from the hot dog. No, he's not, but he's making De La, De La Hoya is certainly not able to make him pay for it. There's a good straight right from De La Hoya. Whitaker back with the right of his own. Oscar turns left-handed now. Let's see what this brings, if anything. And he's a natural left-hander, Rich, so it appears that he's, he's comfortable switching over. Well, it's not anything we've seen before from De La Hoya, so it's an unusual bit of strategy. Now the two trying to psych each other out. That punch taken on the shoulder. Whitaker misses as the round comes to an end. And Whitaker's eye, take a look at it there. That knot's developing pretty good, just above it. Vamos a bien, físicamente, muy bien. Mira, si te pones a la zurda, fítalo bien para buscar el uppercut. O si no, si te pones a la izquierda, tienes que hacer tu bending golpeando con la derecha, para buscar tu gancho. Tienes que hacer tu bending, entrando aquí, boom, bam, bending, golpeando con la derecha. Relax, oh, relax, cool. relax in the corner, relax. Cool. Listen to me. Now listen to me. Okay, just listen to me. Keep snapping the jab. Keep snapping the jab like you're doing. The jab is beautiful. As soon as you get closer, enjoy all your matches with that both hands over the guy and get a taste in the body shot. Rich in the De La Hoya corner that Jesus Rivera was telling him that when you switch over to Southpaw, bend at the waist to give yourself the opportunity to throw the right. Well, he is opening up in southpaw fashion. So remember we said, and Oscar has said all along, he had four or five game plans for this fight. He's gone to plan B, which is to go to a southpaw attack. Big punch from De La Hoya. That's but he tough. just missed the follow-up left hook as Whitaker got out of there. Whitaker needs to get his jab back going the way that it was early in the fight. Yet to 
see any advantage for De La Hoya in turning to southpaw so far in this fight. This is the left hook there. Oh, okay, one step by. Hey, hey, you go. Come on, come on. Now back to an orthodox stance. I'm not a great believer of doing that. I saw Marvin Hagler blow the first four rounds of his fight against Sugar Ray Leonard playing around with a southpaw style. And it ended up costing him the decision. Camille Whitaker's eye looks to me like it could become a problem before the end of this fight. Swelling is there. And the lawyer switches back over again. Good uh, combination inside. At least so far, this has certainly not looked like a three to one fight. It certainly has it. And that's the odds that De La Hoya was favored by. Whitaker wild and then runs into a left hook from De La Hoya, partially taken on his glove. most spectacular knockouts were scored in the lower weights now since so coming up to the higher weight at 140 of course uh, he did stop Chavez in four rounds but without a knockdown and Gonzalez did go the distance with him so far no knockdowns in this fight a lot of shoulder movement from Whitaker as he leads with his left hand Trying to counter off that jab now. Nice punch by Whitaker. Oh, that's a that's a clever bit of work by Whitaker. Mills Lane didn't like it because what he did was he turned De La Hoya, got behind him, and then was hitting him from the side. Turned him completely around. Good shot by Whitaker. Oh. Right, it was a hard right inside as Whitaker was chasing after him. That'll be a tough round to score for the judges. And we're running into some close rounds now that could go either way. There. 
And Hills Lane isn't going to make a big deal about it. He just told him, watch your, watch your head. So, so we've had some roughhouse stuff here, too, as Whitaker gets away from those shots. And this crowd is into this. Beautiful jab from Whitaker. So he is sliding to his right and landing the jab. Good right hand by De La Hoya there. Oscar trying to put some power now on Whitaker as he unloads that combination. And Whitaker did not get away from all of them that time. Whitaker walked right into a shot from De La Hoya. Another right hand by De La Hoya. Often said what a great weapon the straight right is against a southpaw. De La Hoya trying to use it, but against Purnell, many of the normal things simply don't apply. De La Hoya now showing some blood from the right nostril. Well, Whitaker certainly is, if not in the best condition of his life, certainly right up there amongst it. Now, it's a good thing for De La Hoya he prepared for a vintage Whitaker. Because this is not the same Pernell Whitaker we saw in the ring against the Abal Hurtado. De La Hoya, you might be able to see the blood now coming out of the nostril. Look at Whitaker. Whitaker getting ready for De La Hoya to throw the straight right. There's the end of the round. <laughs> and De La Hoya. There's some showmanship in the ring, Rich. There's the gamesmanship to be sure. Dime la verdad. ¿Estás cansado? No. Entonces. Gonna take a look. Take a look at the takedown here. This is more out of the WWF, the World Wrestling Federation, as both men go to the floor. But what? And the end of the. There's uh, Oscar's reaction at the end of the round. Well, there was another violent collision of the heads though before that takedown. Jesus Rivero asking Oscar Deloitte in his corner, tell me the truth, are you tired? To which Oscar responded, no. Rivero says, then good, let's get to work. All right, the two eyeing each other warily here at the start of the round. We're in round eight. Scheduled for 12, WBC welterweight title on the line, and of course, with these two fighters, I believe is the more prestigious title, and that is the pound for pound, the moniker that seems to go along with this fight. Whitaker, though, clearly motivated for this one. And all of those excuses of the past, the fights in recent years when he hasn't looked that good, simply don't apply here tonight. That's for sure. Whitaker really trained hard for this fight, Rich. He looks to be in splendid condition. Well, he had an impeccable training camp, high quality sparring partners. He has not used his legs unnecessarily here tonight, so he looks in a tremendous condition. De La Hoya trying to counter the punches here of Whitaker. Look at this, crouching, both of them, the two of them looking, eyeing each other, looking for an opening. Here's a chess match here.
seconds to go. Whitaker trying to get that jab to work. Whitaker's going to need to throw more himself. He needs to throw in combinations. Well, if they weren't fighting, you'd think they were enjoying each other's company out there. I think they're each enjoying trying to outfox the other guy. So Whitaker with a flurry at the end of the round. Okay, wait till you're telling me. No, we're telling you. Tell I'm you telling you right now. That's okay. I'm you telling you right now. We've been handling okay. the fight. All right, I'm just telling you right now. Okay. okay. I'll lose again. No, 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 no. 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 You're going to win. Like you're going to knock this guy out. Win the fucking you're going to punch. That's yes. all. Punch. No. I got no, him. No, no, no. Fuck that. Fuck that. Jab, bola punch. No, jab, bola punch. Tienes que tirar. Si te pones a la zurda, busca tu uppercut, te clavas bien aquí, que se inclina. Te clavas tu uppercut. Here you see a De La Hoya punch coming up. It's both fighters looking at each other. Whitaker missing and then seemed disappointed with himself. Juan Oscar coming back with a nice left hand that seemed to stun Whitaker ever so briefly. All right, here we go in round nine. Scheduled for 12. Whitaker defending the Welterweight Championship. Gets hit right off the bat here in the ninth round. They were very clear with Whitaker in his corner, telling him he's losing the fight. They seemed to encourage, needed to encourage him that he was going to be able to come back and win it. Well, up until the Hurtado fight, he had never scored a knockout past the sixth round. Maybe that's the motivation behind telling him in his corner that he's behind. I feel he's behind, and they may have just been trying to let him know really what the situation is as far as they see it. They have a way of landing and spinning Whitaker around. And landing a good body shot in that exchange, too, Rich. Body punch by Whitaker and another one to the head. De La Hoya trying to answer. It's remarkable how easy De La Hoya had it at times in championship fights with Ruelas and Jesse James Leha, even with Chavez. But how the last two fights have been real battles for him. With Miguel on Hill Gonzalez and tonight here with Cornell Whitaker. Whitaker chasing De La Hoya back with a jab, and then hurting De La Hoya a little bit with a left hook to the head. And another clash of heads there against the ropes. Whitaker having a good round here as we move to one minute remaining in round nine. De La Hoya goes down. Is it a knockdown? No, it's a knockdown. It is a Very upset. 
upset that was called a knockdown and it could have cost him a 10 8 round. Well, it was a short punch. Well, Mills Lane has got to call that a knockdown. He's, He's got said, to call it, but it may have been more that uh, Whitaker had him wrapped with, and then with his right hand and shoved him down. I'm not, well, it's, it's, tough, it's tough to tell. It is not a knockdown in the true sense of the word, but in Mills Lane mind, what the deal is this. There was a punch landed. It was landed even though it didn't look that hard, and it went to the side of the head, and De La Hoya went to a knee, so he called it a knockdown. Now we are in round 10. The judges tonight are all from the state of Nevada, Chuck Giampa, Jerry Roth, and Dolby Shirley, and they suddenly become very important. I thought De La Hoya had a very poor round in round nine, and now he needs to be seen if he can answer. Let me remind you fans that against Miguel Angel Gonzalez, he lost rounds nine and ten to Gonzalez on all three cards, and that was his rough moment. But he came back with a very strong 11th and 12th round. So when, once he caught his second win, can he catch it here? And once again, between rounds, they asked him, are you tired? So perhaps Jesus Rivero sees something in Oscar that hasn't been evident in his fights of the past. Maybe Oscar is beginning to tire. Nice right hand by De La Hoya. We have in all likelihood a very close fight evolving here. De La Hoya not getting off. Getting that jab to work. Remember how many times Cornell Whitaker has gone 12 rounds. This is not going to be unfamiliar territory to him as it moves into the championship rounds. Taylor Hoy is going to have to get some offense going here in the 10th round. Good right hand by Taylor Hoy up top of the head. Whitaker, he ducked just low enough to get a, make it a less effective punch. Whitaker chases after De La Hoya. Whitaker seems to want to invite the exchanges. Good counter left there by De La Hoya. Came in a flurry of punches by Oscar, who can, does have the ability to fight going backwards. You saw him do it against uh, Rafael Ruelas, as Ruelas was coming in at him at a high tempo. Through the, through the entire fight for two rounds, and then De La Hoya just caught him one, and that was it. Pernell <laughs> Whitaker getting away from those shots. Now De La Hoya tries to put it out on the power. The bell brings the tenth round to an end. Again, it seemed as though Whitaker was controlling the round, but the, two in the final go, two seconds, they were right now. Okay, they can get away. Huh? All right, baby, all right. Two rounds left. Two rounds left. Two rounds left is all we got. Two rounds, baby. Two fucking rounds. Two rounds, baby. Two rounds. Two rounds. Two rounds. Two rounds. You got to throw punches. Two rounds. That's it. Two rounds. You got to kill them two rounds. You have to go for laterals and hit them. If you put it to the side, Si te pones a la zurda, tú bending, golpeando, pum, con la derecha. Clávalo con la derecha. Ya sabes cuál es el bending. Golpeando, ya sabes. Por acá, aquí. Pum, pa, tu derecha, de gancho. We move into the championship rounds now. The crowd throwing and warming to the action. But they were ready before this fight ever got started. It's lived up to the billing too, Rich. Round 11. Oscar De La Hoya, who has nowhere near the experience in terms of fighting rounds 11 and 12 that Pernell Whitaker has. Whitaker's eye got halfway open, but it did not close as bad as I thought it might. It was about this state a few rounds ago. It has not worsened. 
nor the cut under Oscar De La Hoya's right eye. There has been one knockdown. Keep that in mind. It came in round nine. De La Hoya on the deck. Whitaker stumbled backwards, but I think he was more off balance than the power of De La Hoya's punches. by Whitaker. And now Whitaker bangs to the body of De La Hoya. Oh, look at that shoulder work by Oscar. He was jumping up and down with his shoulder. Whitaker was expecting Mills Lane to warn De La Hoya, and it didn't happen. And so he wasn't ready for that onslaught. Halfway through the 11th round. Big jab by Whitaker pushes De La Hoya back into the boats. It's surprisingly rich. I don't know how you feel, but it looks to me as though Whitaker could be in better condition for this fight than De La Hoya. Good jab from Whitaker. Now they're very excited in Whitaker's corner. I'm surprised by the fact that De La Hoya has never really hurt Whitaker in this fight. That one left uppercut earlier in the fight might have been the closest thing to him. Whitaker winding up and throwing the left hand. De La Hoya throwing in combinations as the two mix it up. Yeah, yeah. Whitaker punching and holding. Half minute to go in the 11th round. No real 
significant punches landed in this last round yet. We're barely past the halfway point, and the round is still up for grabs. Maybe the fight. Could very well be. Final minute of the fight. That one glanced off the side of the head of Whitaker. But De La Hoya at least was throwing punches and Whitaker was not. Neither man has mounted much of an offensive arsenal here in the final round. Probably each man waiting to try to close the show in style. I suspect in the final 30 seconds they'll both open up. Some good body shots from De La Hoya in that exchange. Seconds of the fight. Whitaker counting some more. Crowd in a panic. There's the end of the fight. The guys look as though they enjoy it. They go and congratulate each other. I think so. There's De La Hoya's dad, Joel De La Hoya Sr. Now that may be premature. On my card, I ended up with Taylor Hoyle 114, Whitaker 112. We're still doing the math. <laughs> Remember, there was a point deducted from Whitaker. There's that headbutt early in the fight that opened the cut below the eye of Whitaker. Or, excuse me, Taylor Hoyle. Southpaw in round number four. I have it 114, 113. Double Hoya. Okay, so the ringside analyst gave it to him. Double Hoya, but very close. This is, this is as close as it gets. Here's the knockdown, or the so called knockdown. He saw a slight punch to the side of De La Hoya's head, and then he went to one knee, and Mills Lane recorded it as a knockdown. That could be huge in the scoring. If the judges score that round, a 10 8 round, a two point round. Now Whitaker feels that he is won. He's climbing up on the ring ropes. Here's Michael Buffer with the decision. To the scorecards. By way of Caesars Palace, here is the Budweiser scorecards. Chuck Jappa scores about 115 to 111. Jerry Roth has it 116 to 110. And Dalby Shirley scores it 116 to 110 for the winner by unanimous decision. And new! Yeah! are ready to attack. I wonder if Hector Camacho's designer for that outfit was Oscar de la Renta. That is not Oscar de la Renta, that's Oscar de la Hoya. He got confused. He'll have to fight him. So, across the ring, there is the Macho Man. Macho Man coming off his upset victory over Sugar Ray Leonard, a fifth-round knockout. He is bringing in this. He says, I realize now that I do have great power. Here's de la Hoya. I'm going to come right at de la Hoya. Let's see if De La Hoya gives him the chance. The jabs by De La Hoya. Camacho moving laterally. Will be his plan after the rumbling. De La Hoya right away drives Camacho back. Good luck, hooked by De La Hoya. Camacho covers up. Camacho has never been stopped. This is the goal of De La Hoya. And Camacho bear hugs already. Camacho trying to clear the cobwebs. De La Hoya always. Camacho in trouble in the corner. Left hook. 
Delahoya closing flanks here. Well, Camacho's tough, though. It's difficult to get on his feet. Only been down one time in his career. Camacho never been out. Delahoya wants to be the first. A little headbutt there. Delahoya sneaky quick left hand and the right cross. The only time Hector Camacho has been to the canvas was against Reyes Cruz. The crowd already expecting something early. Two shots by De La Hoya. Halfway through the on the approaching breaks. side of round one. Oh, look how fast these punches are from De La Hoya. He throws that left hook so off time with his right hand. He throws the right hand and then a real fast left hook on a slow right hand. Lures you into a false sense of security and he cracks with the left hook. Left hook by De La Hoya driving Camacho back. De La Hoya's got to settle down. He's got to go back to what's working. He's got to get back to landing those punches. Even taking some of the power off of them for a moment. And then tune it up. Well, you've got the adrenaline of the crowd first round. You get up a level more, you know. Look at Camacho trying to touch him, trying to be pesky to that jab. Also, you try to show your opponent that south cross and it's confuse him. Show him what that looks like. Camacho landed with his best shot of the round. De La Hoya comes inside, turning nicely. Got De La Hoya's attention coming into Camacho, but De La Hoya back. And the holding by Camacho. Camacho on the defense, which we had expected. I had felt like he would taste the power of De La Hoya early and then become extremely defensive. Hector Camacho. And he takes the power early. We saw him in defensive fights with Julio Cesar Chavez. Also with Trinidad, but he fought in those fights for a while. He stood until he got hurt. And he says now, in those fights, I wish I would have had more opportunities to be aggressive. He said I only have two problems. I was too defensive. The first round has been a good indicator of what's to come. Camacho De La Hoya ended round Time. one. He's coming hard, but he's coming tall. And you're standing right up with him, too. You want to stay short, OK? If he wants to come hard, you've got to get down a little bit lower, stay short. He'll run into the left hand. You're overextending it a little too much. His, his head is right here. And you're no stool for Oscar De La Hoya. There's a good left hand by De La Hoya, driving Camacho back. One of two shots that really stunned. Good, Camacho oh. almost putting him down. Camacho has square heels. He's hard to get off his feet. And some pretty fast track shoes when he gets hurt. De La Hoya did spin into a couple of good left hooks. Here we go in round two. Camacho being told to crouch more by his corner. And therefore, De La Hoya would run right into a possible power shot. Macho down low now. Right, step back, step back, let him go, let him go. Keep him in front, keep him in front. They are separated. Yeah. Macho goes down, hands a body shot, and ties up. Trying to be cagey. The only time Hector hey. Camacho visited the canvas back in June of 1988. Right. Okay. Jones is going they want him to stand his ground. Oh, that's difficult words against a fighter like De La Hoya. De La Hoya, good hook in the opening round. Cuts off the ring here in round two. Extremely strong. He says, now, I am taking my time and using counter punches more. I am more aggressive than we saw that in the first round. Looking for KOs is De La Hoya. Says his best punch is the left hook. I think myself and Hector Camacho would agree. Well, a double left hook against this style would work. So with the lead right as Camacho comes in, and De La Hoya ties him up. When Camacho comes in, he'll be vulnerable for a lead right by De La Hoya. See Camacho touch him, try to, try to wipe down that left hook, try to hold that hook. When your opponent touches you like that, a lot of times the best thing to do is just to swipe that punch down. Here's a good left uppercut. Good uppercut by De La Hoya. Just missed with what would have been. An exceptional left hook. Speed is power. 
Deloy has got that speed. Camacho has been known throughout his career as a fast, flashy fighter. Now, though, at this weight, he's trying to settle down more, trying to punch with his opponents. He says, now I didn't realize that I had power. But he's not doing it in this fight thus far. He's been driven back by De La Hoya and looks a little bit more like the older Camacho moving laterally. Yeah, I think he's confused by the speed of Oscar De La Hoya. Now he comes in, tries to punch and get away. That is a Camacho trademark thus far early. If you're going to gamble, trying to get inside, tie De La Hoya up and don't get hit at any cost. So he will pick his spots and try to charge inside. And De La Hoya will try to muscle him as he does here and lands three left hooks and an uppercut. A patient stalker. That is the personality right now of Oscar De La Hoya. Macho slapping with the jab. See that slow right hand of De La Hoya's? That he throws, the he throws it slow, so it deflects it seems so much faster. Plus, the punches come at you at different right. times. He's going to hit with a right and left. This comes at right and left. And more rights and left. And round two is gone. Room, you're fighting exactly the fight that we don't want to fight, okay? You got to pick up your pace, you got to start working your jab. You're giving them a little too much room. That round comes with it away. You have to get first round. You got to pick up the pace. Don't look for no one shot. Look like you're trying to set back, waiting on one big shot to catch him. With. Just start putting them together the same way you was in training. Yeah. So you just you stay waiting on one big shot is no good. Start putting them together, working your jab, working your jab. You got to pick up your pace on this guy. Otherwise, you're he coasting right into the groove that he wants. You're giving him a lot too much room. He's starting to fold here a little bit. He's starting to do some amateur things. Keep your hands up, keep your head moving, and stay low. Okay, you make him work. Make him work. Make him work. Round three, opposite attack. Oscar De La Hoya and Hector Camacho from the Thomas and Max Center by way of Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. Dave Bon Temple, along with Sean O'Grady. In between rounds, Camacho's corner pleased, De La Hoya's corner not pleased. They want him to pick up the pace and use his jab more. Pick up the pace, put more pressure on. Throw more combinations against Camacho. Camacho is so difficult to hit one punch solidly. And once you start missing like Camacho, once he can get out of your way, the way of your punches, all of a sudden you're after he hits him without throwing him. That's a good combination. De La Hoya, and then look at the spider down Camacho, trying to tie up. If you let Camacho go from ring post to ring post, he will do so. What will stop that is the good body shots. Set those up with the jab. From Camacho's standpoint, he wants to get down lower and then explode as De La Hoya comes into him. That's his inside fight. Outside, of course, he's been a very good fighter moving out of There's a sneaky uppercut by De La Hoya. You know why De La Hoya flattened Camacho. Camacho is a survivor in the ring. When he is hurt, at a vital moment, he will tie up. He'll do anything to survive in his fight. Well, we're seeing more fire here from yeah, De La Hoya than he against Whitaker, a similar start. And we are also seeing more fight from Hector Camacho than we saw against Trinidad. Well, the win over Leonard certainly had to make him a little brave a little bit more on the muscle. No and this tying up with the strategy here. No holding, but that's not going to happen long. That's going to happen very much. If you start pounding your opponent's body, they hold you hand, your head, but not your arms. Let them have it in the body. It's all three shots for you. Good sneaky uppercut by De La Hoya. He fired it from outside. If you have the reflexes, you can get away with that. That's usually a bit of a textbook no-no. But if you're quick enough to fire it and then get back to a defensive posture, you can do it. Two Ooh. shots by De La Hoya. The oh, first was blocked. Second one got in. Those hurt right on that level. Liver sits on the right side of your body. Oh, they're smart. And those body shots accumulate. Big shot there by De La Hoya. Got everything into the body shot on Camacho. Left Again, hook. Going around for that left hook to Gancho. Right oh. hand by De La Hoya. Not wasting 
opportunities. When he gets the chance to punch, he explodes everything into it. Watch your head. Oh, he's got to hit him back. He's got to break this frame from Oscar De La Hoya. De La Hoya's walking all over him. That was a good one. Good, good round for De La Hoya. with one hand, you're fighting with your left hand. Let's let both hands start going now. Both hands go. When he gets close, you're going very defense. You're going defense. He's throwing a couple shots and you're parrying him. You fight the two punches. When he's on tight on you, come back hard with both hands, Hector. Do you understand? He's coming to you. Let's use your experience. You've been there. Sucker this guy in. He wants to keep coming and leaving. Go to him and meet him. Meet him with the left hand. Until you get fucking bumped. pressure on him all the way. What the corners are talking about. The leaping De La Hoya. He's vulnerable, but Camacho could not counter here. He's too busy getting hit. He's blocking his punches. He has tasted the power. Camacho doesn't like the taste of it. Well, it is the fourth round, and the point by Camacho's corner is that De La Hoya is leaping to these shots and therefore overextending his body for a counter. Whether or not Camacho sees that angle is another story. There are more punches from Camacho in the first part of this round. He gives no more punches. Break. When Camacho throws his jab, watch how he opens his glove. Get a little bit more extensions. More extension, maybe three inches more. And he needs it in this fight. 68 inches on his reach compared to 74 inches in De La Hoya. De La Hoya, 5'11". Camacho, only 5'6". Both men weighed in at 147. But he is at a big disadvantage, Camacho is. The reach and the height of the punch. And he is You're starting him. to hold excessively, drawing some booze. Camacho is trying to dart inside. And if he can't get his punch off, hold up so he doesn't pay the price. Delahoy comes right at him. Good right by Delahoy, a lead right. Nice uppercut attempt to just miss. That's a sneaky uppercut by De La Hoya. It's very fast. It's sneaky because it's thrown off time. Yeah, look at that. This combination. One, two. Two shots. Two shots by De La Hoya. Starting to figure Camacho out, perhaps. Jabs by Camacho. Standing right in on De La Hoya. Uppercut into a hook by De La Hoya. Grazing left hook by Oscar De La Hoya. Macho's jabs, just pretty much range finders there. Yeah, they're not really landing, but they are keeping the eyes busy of De La Hoya. The Camacho must do as much to keep De La Hoya out there, not closing in where he can hit it. Here comes De La Hoya again. Relentless in his pursuit. Look how much bigger De La Hoya looks than Camacho. Camacho hit broad shoulders, but uh, he's really fighting up. Well, De La Hoya talked about fighting in the middleweight division. Camacho got a lot of his acclaim down in the lower weight division and maybe at the top of what he can accommodate. He did fight Leonard at 54. See and down to 47 here. See what Delo is trying to do too. He's trying to kill that jab with Camacho. Watch him counter that jab with a quick left hook over the top. That is a pesky jab. Oh. And so Delo Hoya had the hook there. It was a grazing one. Camacho with an upper cut back. Right back plan for this fight from De La Hoya, just keeping the pressure on and pounding the body. I think he's done a good job of keeping the pressure on. I'd like to see more body shots from him. Remember those debilitating left hooks of the body he was throwing in the last round, that third round? Well, he's gotten off the body this round. Oh, there we go. He goes back. I think he's listening to me. on his ass, okay? And work your jab a little bit more. Keep working the jab. You're getting closer and closer to him each time as you're moving along, but work the jab just a little bit more. You're getting closer to him now. He's getting closer and closer and where you start catching because he's bidding in. Now, you gave you a seven round. This is the fourth round coming up. Okay? Now, 
two or three punches at a time. Just that, just that second and third punch is going to get him. You understand? Keep putting that pressure on him. Work that left hand. Bring the right hand. You rip a couple of those body shots, they'll catch him with that hook. Make him fight. Stay in there tight. We start round five of opposite attack. Oscar De La Hoya and Hector Macho Camacho. Camacho continues to swarm and jump at De La Hoya and tie him up. De La Hoya has applied the real pressure in the fight. They want more of that pressure. Emmanuel Stewart, the veteran trainer, telling his man, keep the pressure on, turn it up just a notch, just a little bit. Let him know you're going to be in his face all night. They want Macho, Macho, Pat Burns, former amateur coach for the for our U.S. amateur team. He wants Camacho to stay in there and rally a little bit, battle with him. He, De La Hoya. He wants the second and third punches together. There's the uppercut by De La Hoya. That's been his sneaky punch in this fight with both the left hand and the right hand because it is thrown from an angle Camacho would not expect. It is a very good punch. However, it does not seem to have the effects that punch was ha having back in the first round. Remember that first round? Hector Camacho right. barely made it out of the first round. I thought he was going to go down on two separate occasions. Two big left hooks landed by Oscar De La Hoya. Still an effective weapon, at least as far as perhaps getting Camacho in range for a bigger shot. De La Hoya keeps coming at him. Fiery intensity by De La Hoya. He wants to rumble. He wants the opportunity. Good right hand. Oh, Camacho is trying. Camacho's hurt by that, though. Yeah, good set of whiskers on Hector Camacho. And he moves out of there. Let's see if De La Hoya goes to the body here. He's got Camacho in the corner. He'll throw something. Just a jab there. Looking to set up the right hand. Or that sneaky uppercut. He threw the lead right there. Great oh, right oh, there, great. Buckle Camacho sees for a second. He has not been as effective with that left hook the last several rounds. So what Oscar is doing is he's trying the straight right hand. Get Camacho watching that right hand. He's not, not, not watching the left hook. Goes downstairs again. Oh, Good move oh, there by De La Hoya. Yeah, De La Hoya controlling Camacho. You can't move with a big fat glove in your stomach all night. Oh. Come it on. just takes the steam out of your legs. Camacho may have half a dance floor no, to work with by the time this fight is over. The way De La Hoya is cutting off the ring and slowing his movement. You know, they boo him, but I appreciate Hector Camacho's resiliency in the sport of boxing. I mean, he has faced all the big champions. He has uh, gone the distance with them. Yeah, he loses, but he gets in the ring with him, and he tries. Like he's trying here with Hector Camacho, with uh, Oscar De La Hoya. Six round coming up. I can't believe it's a six round. Mira, look at Oscar. Come here. Oscar. Espera. So you have you're taking a left touch away from him, which is strictly only his left hand anyway. You're taking that away from him. So just keep the pressure on him. That's the only shot that he's got. You keep the heat on him. Round six. Oscar De La Hoya, Hector Camacho, opposites attack. Here in Las Vegas. De La Hoya off to a fast start as far as his boxing goes. Camacho has not done very much offensively. Sean Camacho has not done very much offensively. Have you given him anything yet as far as rounds? You know what has happened this fight is he tasted the power in that first round from Oscar. And since that opening round, he has been on his bicycle. 
Have you given uh, any rounds to Camacho? I don't think Camacho's in. He's not in one, one of my rounds on my scorecard. Here comes the high attack. Camacho takes some more. Big shot. Body shot. Another one. Camacho pulling back. Trying to get on the bicycle. Delahoya continues with the body attack. An opportunity to close it. Camacho on wildly legs. Talk about Trinidad and Chavez. They could not finish him. They had Camacho hurt. Will De La Hoya get him out? De La Hoya won the knockout by the sixth round. This is the magical round for Oscar De La Hoya. Great. Camacho fighting back there with the style that could set up a knockout because he's not circling the ring entirely. He's still pretty defensive. Hard no, but he does not want to fight. He's, he's, had, he's had no choice in this round. De La Hoya has been Hoya on top of him. Yep, it's up to De La Hoya to cut off the ring and make Camacho fight. Make him stop running. It's the jab and then the shuffle step over by De La Hoya. He whips Camacho again with a hook. Very subtle movement by De La Hoya. Yeah, it's a kind of jabbing hook that Oscar uses to try to kill the jab. And what he's done is he's... He's negated the jab of Macho Man. See, Camacho can't use that jab effectively now. Every time he reaches to throw it, he gets smacked with the left hand over the top. Camacho on the defense. Oh, yeah, and this is where... He this, is, is, this is what Oscar De La Hoya did not want. He didn't want all this movement, all this running. It's up to Oscar to cut the ring off, make Hector fight. Well, De La Hoya is winning in any case. May not be the knockout he wants, but he did hurt Camacho in this round. He's hurt Camacho on numerous occasions in this fight. Good right to the it's top good. there. Jab, left hand by Camacho, attempted not much on it. De La Hoya forces his way through, gets the jab, the hook. He is forcing all of this fight on Camacho. The tie up with Camacho with no retaliation. A tremendous round six for the Golden Boy. And we'll see what kind of tempo that sets for the second half of this fight. Time! your combinations are working and what he's doing he's doing the same shit as ricky now you, he's pulling straight out catch him on the tail end you understand yeah, relax, when relax. he finishes up with everything he's pulling straight out just keep leaping right to his ass okay big shot by de la hoya yeah those uppercuts have been such a debilitating weapon on the chin of hector camacho just to be able to stay in there camacho is taking it Big shot again by De La Hoya. The uppercut forces his way through with the jab and the land to hook. That's the intangible benefit of the speed. So now we get ready to go in round seven. Oscar's round. This is the one De La Hoya predicted Time. the fight would end in. So let's see what kind of a forecaster he is. Along with the type of a fighter he is. And there is excessive water in Corner of Camacho and the tapes. Come on, just, just I run the glove is getting sweaty. And they throw the ice on the fighter trying to get the attention right away. It's coming at us, coming all over the place. So Camacho gets essentially a uh, two-minute break here. I mean, this is like a tennis player changing shoes or changing rackets. Gotta break this onslaught. Uh, Maybe the ice was no accident. Pat Burns, the veteran cameraman, moving on the ice. Extra time for Hector Macho Camacho. Let's see if De La Hoya can come through on his prediction of a knockout in the seventh. We'll need Camacho's cooperation to some extent right. as far as the style is concerned. Macho on the outside. Hand misses by Camacho. De La Hoya ducking Camacho over the top. Good offensive opportunity here for Oscar. As he's got Camacho cornered. Now Camacho back. 
In the center. Crowd urging. Oscar De La Hoya on. Arthur Camacho. He has tasted the power and he doesn't like it. And ironically, this being De La Hoya's round, it's the slowest round of the fight so far. No, it's still early. Good left hook to the body by De La Hoya. Camacho fleet enough to use some ring and get away. No hold in. Put him round. back in. What fighters normally do is they break those rounds Pull into back. minutes. There's three, obviously three minutes to a round. But right. The first step minute step of back. that round, kind of low to take time to set up your attack for later on in the round. The second minute, you turn it up just a notch. And that, that third minute, you really want to pour it on. Come on, guys. These punch, professional punch, fighters, punch. sometimes they, they use their most energy early. There's a big left up. Here he comes. There's hurt. Bella Hoya coming in. Camacho gets away. Final minute. He was the seventh. He is next. Slippery. Hector Camacho. Camacho. Good left hook by De La Hoya. Camacho in the corner here. Two punch combination attempted by De La Hoya. Camacho tying him up. I tell you, this is a difficult fighter to face. Big point. Five shots again, six shots. And Camacho took them all. He retreats. Camacho man. Not dancing to the tune he wants now. De La Hoya has found him in the latter stages of round seven. Now remember everyone had questioned the ability of De La Hoya when he fought Janelle Whitaker. I think. Another southpaw, Camacho, he has a lot of answers tonight. And seventh round is over. Okay, we got five rounds to go, okay? There ain't no bullshitting around. You want this title, you better go after this son of a bitch, you understand? You better go after him, and you gotta fight him. You get in there and you work both hands. You're not gonna win a decision. It's gonna have to be a dog fight. You need to throw hard punches, and you gotta throw them sharp and short. Okay, let him go. You take it to another level. Okay, work both hands, get inside, start working up underneath. Round coming up already. He got about a seven. Put the shots together a little bit faster, but put some more power into him. You get a good screen to go in, and then you take a little break. And do it. Here's the De La Hoya left hook. Follows it up with an uppercut. All of this happened in the second half of the round after what had been. Out. A slow start in round seven. There is Oscar De La Hoya. We would think comfortably in command. And Camacho hearing it from his corner between the seventh and eighth, saying, listen, you go fight this guy if you want it. You want a decision. And he starts to fight here. A good straight left. That is his best punch. Camacho asserting himself somewhat there. Left hook to the body. And De La Hoya, De La Hoya, look at this pressure from him. There is no rest at all for Camacho. Now De La Hoya with the right hand now, driving Camacho back. Another big right hand with a grazing shot. Just missed, landing big. You heard Pat Burns tell Hector Camacho. Right. Let him up, let him up, let him up. Can only win this by knockout. And he would appear to be right. Right, back, Camacho off to a slow start on the scorecards. In fact, that may be the, the way, the only way that Hector Camacho can win around. That's right. He has been extremely defensive tonight. He's only been close in one round the second. Otherwise, they've been very clear De La Hoya rounds. Uppercut by De La Hoya. But has De La Hoya slowed? He has missed a lot of punches. Yes, he's thrown a lot of punches and he's landed many. Is this an opportunity, Cut. a window of opportunity Cut. open for Hector Camacho and he's not using it? Well, De La Hoya is trying to take that window away by pounding the body, hopefully slowing the movement later on. Camacho is resilient as far as his ability to take shots, not throwing too much. 
With sneaky punches by De La Hoya. Drives Camacho back. Yeah, three punch combination. They want fours and fives from the corner of De La Hoya. Again, the uppercut by De La Hoya. Able to break the rules about throwing it from so far out. Break. But he turns into the shot and he ends up squared after the punch is over, so he's got himself defensively covered. Five punches here on Camacho. Oh, those hurt tomorrow. When you take a look at the guys, De La Hoya has stopped. Camacho is showing a pretty good chin tonight. Tying up and whatever. He has taken some flush bombs from De La Hoya and has stood. Break! Step back, step back. And he's End of round eight. Not as much offense by either guy. I think De La Hoya in command. round punches, combinations, try to put them together. See, he's pulling out on every damn thing. That's why you can't catch it, because once you get it to go on, he's pulling away. So you got to lunge after him. You may have to miss him, but you're going to have to catch him on the tail end shots. Just leap after him after you, understand? Because he's pulling straight out. Once you start hitting him, he goes straight back, and then you can't catch him. Just leap after him and keep going. And just punch it with all the power you got with the combinations this time. You're getting him to go on, but he gets off by pulling it out of range, and that way you can't get him. Everything hard this round. Emmanuel Stewart understands the problems that De La Hoya is having, and here's some that he's not having. Three-punch combination that lands on Mr. Camacho. Camacho retaliates with one shot. That's not a ratio Camacho would want. Start of the ninth round, opposite the tax. Oscar De La Hoya and Hector Camacho in Las Vegas, Nevada. Dave Fontempo and Sean O'Grady at ringside of what has been a we believe a one-sided effort here by Oscar De La Hoya over Camacho to date. Come on, break. Camacho doing a lot with the bear hugs, not doing much offensively. De La Hoya told between rounds, go after him, lunge if you have to, because Camacho is going straight back. Oh, that hurts. Did you see that left hook to the body? A flinch from Camacho, he knows those punches hurt. It, it's easy to break a rib over there when you break. get hit and your body breaks the cartilage. Oh, hold and now. man, that stings. The COVID loose cartilage like that hurts every time you take a deep breath. It uh, Keep hurts it for a Keep long it time, too. Well, the skeptics, Come on, you the break. skeptics of Hector Camacho said that if he didn't like the way things were going, he would run. Actually, what he's done is tie up. Now, De La Hoya is coming after him again. Camacho hurt. Big right hand. He goes back again. Trying to throw jabs and show some heart. Midway through nine, the body is open for De La Hoya. He lands. And Camacho with the bear hug. That's the one bet they didn't have in Las Vegas. The bear hug over under. Because Camacho has gone to it a lot tonight. The left hook to the body, that punch right there is the one that can win this fight. Big one. Yeah, not that. The left hook to the body is the punch. Big shot here by De La Hoya, continuing to work Camacho. Camacho has done almost nothing offensively, now takes three shots Let's from see how, De La Hoya. Yeah, that freezes him in his tracks, too. You hit him around the body several rounds, they quit all that movement. That's what... Oscar is trying to control downstairs to the body. They're waving him on. Robin Alcazar in the corner telling Oscar, come on, more pressure. Break. And downstairs to the body. Well, they like what they see with those ripping hooks to the body. He's put more together this round than since early in the fight. Going back, big uppercut by De La Hoya. Camacho has to go down. He gets right up with that long, leaping uppercut. And for major damage on the Nacho Man. And he is hurt. Smart enough to use the count, but De La Hoya, a huge finisher. Let's see if Camacho can bear hug his way through. Round nine, final seconds of it. More pressure by De La Hoya. More hugs for Camacho. Camacho.
Camacho may make it through this round. But he was decked. Set up by that big De La Hoya bomb. The night is over. Camacho is assuring the fans he's all right. Let's see if he is. He's assuring his wife, Amy, that he's all right. Amy near to tears at seeing the beating her husband is taking. So tough to come inside and watch. And here, you want to fight this guy? Who is this? Okay, the damage occurs. The big uppercut by De La Hoya, and the punctuating right hand drives him back. There is the lunging that they're talking about. That's what Emmanuel Stewart was asking for, and he gets from De La Hoya. See him moving forward while he's punches, throwing his punches down goes Hector Camacho. He gave oh. Camacho nowhere to go. We start the tenth. Very tough times for Amy Camacho. Hector Camacho's wife boxing is such a deep and personal sport when you're involved. And here we are in the tent. De La Hoya has to look for someone who wants to finish it now. He is puffed. Well, if he wants to finish it now, he has to get back to the body. Back that left hook to the body. It did the damage. Your hand. Right. Those punches hurt. You can hit the chin and shake him off. You can hit the chin, you go to sleep. There's no pain to it. Sometimes you wake up with a headache. You're downstairs, they hurt. The De La Hoya fans picking it up. Camacho Bear hooks. He was down in the ninth. Did get right up. Went to a neutral corner. Utilized the whole cap. And for Hector Camacho, the story may be simply whether he survives in this fight or does not. Seems to try to use that pawn that. that Left with that right fist out there, Hector does. He to just put it out there to kind of throw Oscar off the left hook and a tie up. What Oscar De La Hoya has to do is he has to pull his arms out. Stop this tying up. You gotta let go of my arms. He is. Pull him out every time you try to tie my hands up. Shake him off. If you keep those hands moving, your opponent can't grab them. And also, Oscar has to cut the ring off now more than ever. He has to cut the ring off and make. Hector, stop moving, stop just running. Make him stand and fight. De La Hoya continues to apply the pressure midway through round 10. Backing Camacho up. Camacho ties up. Left hook to the body, right hand upstairs by De La Hoya. He senses another attack. Camacho tries to keep him off. He's in the corner. That's dangerous. And De La Hoya tees off with the right hand with Camacho able to sustain for a while. Final minute of the 10th. De La Hoya being implored to come forward and continues to do it. Camacho with a token shot here so much of whatever steam he had in his punches was taken away. Taken away because he is taking his body away and he punches. To punch hard, you have to commit. You have to throw your body and thrust your upper body into your opponent. And Camacho is not interested in doing that. There, back to the body. Oh, 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 oh. Continues to come on. Camacho hurt again. And De La Hoya goes down. He there. can't tie up now. That's He's having trouble tying him up. He manages to do it. Camacho with a lot of courage as far as taking the shot, wants to finish, and it looks like he will get through the tenth. You can still pull this off. It's not over till the end of the twelfth round. You understand? You got two rounds now. You got two rounds. Deep breaths. Deep breaths. Deep breaths. Start bringing that left hand up. Bring the left hand up, you're still shooting over. Bring the left hand up, let both hands go. Stay in there tight, let him fly. You need to knock out. Oh, Hold the ground. Just redo it. Hey. Get you push it, and every time you finish up, his legs is weak. So when you finish up with punches, always keep pushing him back. Okay, if you go all out this round, you can end it, I believe. I believe he's ready to go this round. But you've got to push all the way through. If you dog yourself, he'll give it up this round. Let's try to get it out of here. We start round 11. Oh, the terror. Ready to go. Not the 
deficits attack. Oscar De La Hoya, Hector Camacho, well, Sean De La Hoya talked about his round to end it. This one was my prediction. Let's see how this one goes. Well, they are saying in the corner. It's the take again. Of De La Hoya, that this is the round. There's that take being applied. You've got to be sure not to take the rope in there. De La Hoya right on top of Camacho here. No rest, no rest. They want more pressure from De La Hoya. Emmanuel Stewart says, I think this is the round you can get him in. Right, right, somebody, somebody. So they don't know how much Camacho will tie up. Right hand by De La Hoya. Camacho right. continues with the excessive tie-up. Wants to survive. Yeah, and Camacho with the left hand. Yeah, Camacho's got some power, and that's what they reminded him between rounds. They want him to throw now more than ever. Dollar Hoy is having a round. It's been a completely one-sided fight. Dollar Hoy with the hook goes down upstairs again with it. He's going to watch the head of Camacho. Both of them coming together. Camacho oh, hitting and tying up. Camacho missing again. De La Hoya back at him. Hook downstairs by De La Hoya, and they are tied up again. Then separated. Left hook by De La Hoya. Tie up by Camacho. Sounds like a theme. We have seen it all night. De La Hoya with some space now. Camacho takes it away. He just wants to survive. Keep those hands moving. If you want to knock out this round. Oh. There's a shot by De La Hoya. Good uppercut. Camacho ties up. De La Hoya works the head again. Good hook downstairs by De La Hoya. Good right going back. Big shot by De La Hoya. Camacho tying on, throws him down to avoid going down. Determined to survive. Anything to survive. I'm telling you, this is a survivor. He was on his way down. He had his left hand. De La Hoya just looked at his corner and shook his left hand. That left hand was hurt. He was thrown down. Right. Camacho tying on for dear life here. And why even threaten him with this qualification? He's hopelessly behind. Hook oh, by De La Hoya. And a good left cross by Hector Camacho. Camacho needs some power now more than he's ever needed. But De La Hoya can't get him out in the 11th as Camacho gets himself through another round. You can still do it. That was a nice left cross. Oh, you're breathing down. That was one of the best left hands you've thrown all That was a hell of a left hand. That was a hell of a left hand. It's there. His right hand is down here. You've been working your ass off on that, Hector. It's there. Get Look, get in tight, get in tight, and throw it hard. And turn it over. Every now and then you throw it, you throw it. You all right? You didn't hurt yourself. Did you? Yeah. Yeah, I heard it show us. Yeah, it showed it. Opposite ways, Camacho very sporadic with his offense. De La Hoya has tried to get him out. It has not happened. Had Camacho down in the ninth. And they are urging Camacho to let go with his punches. Let go with that punch his head left. They said you caught him in the last round in the 11th. Got to 
put some mustard behind him. Come on, no holding. Camacho has nothing to lose in the 12th round. He might as well let it all go. De La Hoya has been in control throughout, and in the last four rounds or so, Camacho's bear hugging has dramatically increased. so badly to have a knockout over the macho man who builds up a name for himself as a survivor in his big mega mega fight opportunities this is a good combination de la hoya the macho will do anything to survive and stay in this fight looking for the final bell halfway gone this club round the macho has bear hug he is held down he's been warned he could care less if they took on, one, go. two points away, it wouldn't matter. Let's go, I'll hold him. But he does not want to be stopped. He's fighting like that, and the guy that doesn't want to be stopped will hang in there. Now, Della Hoya goes for it one more time. Bringing the crowd to their feet again. Camacho holds on longer. Time, time, Wrestling time, against time, time, He may see some type of intervention go, go. or warning or a point. the margin of victory, 13 points now instead of 12. Big up the cut by De La Hoya. Camacho really hurt. But De La Hoya not with much time. It's really a footnote at this point. He wants to knock Camacho out. He's done everything but that up till now. He wants a KO. He doesn't care. All his experience, his 22 years of boxing, to stay in there and get through. As De La Hoya is but seconds away from a lopsided victory and the maintenance of his WBC welterweight title. It's only a matter of totaling the cards. Oscar, congratulations. A hug from the wife, Amy. Awesome. So concerned about her husband. Oscar went all the way playing to his fans. I think he went every round. But he wanted a knockout tonight. A little disappointment from him, but he didn't get that. He also hurt his left shoulder. Well, he did everything but score the knockout in this fight. And if you're in with somebody who only wants to survive, the knockout is a very rare thing. If you have to Camacho after he felt the power of De La Hoya, he was very reluctant to rumble at all. Camacho was down in this bout. De La Hoya had chances to finish him, but as he got close, Camacho bear hug, tackled, threw, did everything to make sure that he was not stopped. And this was one bout in which he was very much a threat to be stopped. There's an interesting poster. Macho time expired, the banner. Well, he survives this fight. De La Hoya certainly disappointed that he didn't get a knockout. However, he won every round. He did pitch the shutout. And the fans love him. Hot Dave Oscar. Doesn't hurt that he's good looking, too. And he can fight. It just shows you how good Oscar De La Hoya is. Hector Camacho did everything that he could to survive. Even though it goes on his record that he went the distance with, with uh, De La Hoya. As a result of that, many people want to fight Hector Camacho to try to draw some kind of comparison as to how they would do against that man, Oscar De La Hoya. He still hasn't been stopped, you can say that. Although 
in this fight, it just looked like he wanted to keep that record intact in the second half. Let's Ladies see the and gentlemen, from Caesars Palace, we go to the Budweiser scorecards. Chuck Champa scores the belt, 120 to 105. John Keane, 120 to 106. And Nick Pum Pum scores at 118 to 108. For the winner, by unanimous decision, and still WBC welterweight champion of the world, the Golden Boy, Oscar De La Hoya. This is legal. This is low. That's low. That's legal. Understand? This will be a clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Test goes good luck. So Oscar De La Hoya looking to the ceiling of this Thomas and Mack building rather than look at Ike Forte. The scene is set. There's tension in the air, and this could be a great welterweight shootout. That is Ike Forte, w former WBA champion, let's go, let's set go. to fight for the first time in 16 months against Oscar De La Hoya. This crowd unquestionably and unabashedly is an Oscar De La Hoya crowd. We're in the western part of the United States. They have trekked here from California and other parts west. Night Quarte comes out blazing with the left hand and trying to establish his gap. Night Quarte, a man that many, many welterweights set off and you don't want to fight. This is Bill Hoy is fighting. Both men have indicated the jab is a very important weapon early. And there's De La Hoya shooting a right over that jab of Corte. That's certainly something they want to do. De La Hoya notoriously a cautious starter in fights. He likes to see what his opponent has. It's a big ring. Some believe that will help De La Hoya, who in theory wants to move a lot more, but right now he's more of a stationary target in front of Mike Corte. What about the ring rust for Corte? Are these early rounds dangerous for him? Will he be sharp after such a long layup? He's standing very straight up, Corte is. And got whacked with the left hook right from the beginning by De La Hoya. Here comes De La Hoya coming after him. And every single punch he throws brings a cheer from this crowd. Corte goes with a right hand and a left hook that misses. Corte normally has a very good defense, a shell-like defense against the jab. And he's opening himself up a little bit more, though, early in this fight. There, that's the kind of defense you normally see from Corte. Both men intent on getting that jab started. Already you can feel the intensity in this fight in round one. About a minute left to go here in round one. And if it's not Hagler Hearns like in its number of punches and big punches, there is a lot of intensity in that ring, and you can feel both fighters looking to make things happen. Left hook gets in by Corte. It's almost as if people are holding their breath, waiting for the first big punch. Corte smiles as De La Hoya whacks him to the body. Corte, though, very adept at blocking punches like that. Obakar boxed that way against Corte, but couldn't land effectively. And Corte comes out of that shell usually with good offense. See, nothing landing there by De La Hoya. That's the great defense of Corte. A very, very close first round. Un poquito, Oscar, más laterales, side to side. Okay. A little bit more, side to side, and you're gonna be first with a jab. Stay, stay more busy with a jab. Okay. And keep and keep him outside. Okay. Don't let him in. Keep him outside. Side to side. And stay busy with a jab. Be first. Watch more jab. Okay, jab. Yeah, just one look right at this. Can't tell me what I can jab. Oh no. Now when I call, can't. Watch more from right there. 
of your attempt to have left to get copper. Four, a single was a on look, not to have a few. No, Halle, Halle after that, have careful what you can, Halle after A word to the wise, Porte often will go into that shell defense and fighters reel off combinations as De La Hoya did, but very few of them really land. However, I thought De La Hoya had a slight edge in round one. And again, it was a very close round, and Porte, you, you must know, does not believe that he can win a decision here. He looked at the Whitaker fight, in which Whitaker lost by six points on two judges' scorecards in a fight that many believed he won, and he feels that he's just not going to get that kind of, get a break here, so he feels he needs a knockout to win. Corte going with the hook. Both men exchanging jabs. Corte really intent on getting his off, as is De La Hoya. Misses with the right, goes Corte, and De La Hoya misses with his own right. Their plan was to have Corte box to the body more. He has not thrown too many body punches yet to De La Hoya's torso. They want more side-to-side -side movement from De La Hoya. Now he's starting to do it. There's Corte's jab. He's starting to find the range with that punch. He's 29-year-old former champion. Loosening up and has not shown a lot of ring rust here. He has, I think, been more mobile and loose than maybe you might expect after a 16-month layoff. Pretty good beginning to round two for Ike Porte. The crowd getting into it, urging Oscar De La Hoya on. De La Hoya with a counter right. Delahoy is finding out what other people have already found out. Ike Corte is not that easy to hit. He may look like a mechanical fighter, but he isn't that much. There's Corte slipping the Delahoy jab. The jab by Corte. By and large, his jab has been more effective here in the second round. Good right hand to the head of Oscar De La Hoya. Corte takes a left hook, but covers up. And covers up again and smiles at De La Hoya and says, come on. And an exchange by both fighters. Big left hook by Corte. ahead. 
so far in Forte does not look rusty. He's actually looked pretty sharp in this spot. And you have to think it will only get better for him in terms of sharpness as he gets some rounds under his belt. There's the defensive line, Forte. It is a good one. There's a drum beat in this building from his Ghana supporters. Corte jabbing to the body. So far, the Corte jab has been as advertised. Pretty good. The crowd chanting Oscar's name. Good hook by De La Hoya. Not a lot of lateral movement from De La Hoya. Just kind of inching backwards. A hook in the right hand. Don't quite get there for De La Hoya. Again, De La Hoya with a counter left and misses, but a good right hand by De La Hoya. A left, and a left to the body by Oscar De La Hoya. You can see the hand speed of De La Hoya. Both men measuring every move and every punch as if the fight was riding on it. Maybe it is. Delahoy trying to counter with the left hook every time Corte throws his jab or the right hand. Neither man has been jabbing that effectively here in this round. Right to the body by Corte. Delahoy obviously looking to counter punch here. De La Hoya very economical with his punches, and will that mean that he gave this round away? Big hook by Corte and another hook. All right, Corte punctuates the third round with two dramatic left hooks. Mike Corte ended the third round and may have stolen the round with these exchanges. De La Hoya has been trying to land his own left hook and is leaving himself open for Corte's hook. And it happened twice. You see the good short hook by Ike Corte. And again, and the second one was right on the point of the chin, very nearly knocked Oscar De La Hoya down. We headed to round four, and if the early rounds were supposed to be dangerous for Ike Corte, they have not been. Good hook by Corte to the body. The Corte people said, don't judge him by the Jose Luis Lopez fight. He was sick, but he claims he had malaria. They only acknowledge he was sick. They say he should have pulled out of the fight. He didn't, was a shell of himself in that fight, and still managed to get a draw, and many people thought he won. They said this version of Mike Corte will be much, much better. And guess what? They were right about this. The other thing about Corte that's striking is, he has been a very fluid boxer in there. Not so one-dimensional, not so mechanical. Good upper body movement. If anything, he's been more fluid than De La Hoya. De La Hoya has looked a little more mechanical than him. De La Hoya unable to get off first. It's been really Corte getting off first. We're in round four, the schedule for 12. Oscar De La Hoya, very economical with his punches. He is not throwing them. Right. 
Marte sticking the jab out. De La Hoya caught with his jab. He has not landed that punch much at all, De La Hoya, since the first round. Right hand blocked by De La Hoya. That's a good jab by De La Hoya. Probably his best in the last couple of rounds. Right hand gets into the head of Corte. This round is there for the taking. Pushing the jabs out there, but both men being very, very careful and very tentative here in round four. De La Hoya tasted two big left hooks from Corte in the last round, but 20 seconds left. Whose round is this? Could be anyone's. Well, I'll 
Oscar De La Hoya begin to throw any of those combinations that they're calling for in this corner. Ten seconds left. Who will try and steal this round? Jorge misses with the right hand. That'll do it for round five. Cuando veíamos a las cuerdas. Descansa. Oscar, Oscar. You had to make some more steps side to side. Que rompe. I move your hands. Ocupado. Put them together. Remember, start to the body. Okay, nakarate wabak. Wagambo wakawuntu. Onulo. Kanketia tu lofi. Agbone kodja benya. Kodja tu. Yake kodja benya. Onu. Onfiano efan. Onu. We are headed into round six, approaching the halfway point of a fight that has turned into very much a chess match. They exchange left hooks. Will it heat up? There were some intense moments. Oh, big left hook sends Corte down.
Kitchen. And after that, Corte was able to follow up. Okay, second down. Put okay, some pretty good shots. Down. So Mark Brown, six down is a big one. This crowd is on its feet cheering. Who was hurt more in round six? That's the question. Some swelling underneath the left eye of Delahoya. Oh, 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 oh. Time! You're not quick. You're not quick. Watch the grease center out there. Mitch Halpern wants some of the grease rubbed off from Oscar Delahoya's face. And they come out for round seven. Well, if Ike Corte suffered anything from his 16 month layoff, it's not evident to any of us. He's fighting an excellent fight. Warning to Delahoya for low blows. It has actually become a battle of left hooks. Corte has done a little better job, I think, with his jab in this fight. And that may be the key, so far at least. His jab is keeping Delahoya off balance, even when it's not landing. But round seven is scheduled for 12. A little over a minute into round seven. Many believe this would go a long way, this fight, and it's showing signs that it, it will. Corte is picking up the beat. He is loose. He is focused. He's making this fight right now. None of the side to side from Delahoya that we all thought we would see from him. He's very much a stationary target in front of Mike Corte, and that is playing into Corte's hands. things that gives Corte a little trouble is lateral movement. And in this round, Oscar De La Hoya is throwing nothing. He has thrown very few punches. And has landed practically nothing. Right hand gets in for De La Hoya. That was blocked. This round is sitting there to be taken. De La Hoya misses with the right to the body. Under a half minute left to go in round seven. No man has taken clear cut control of this round, but Corte has certainly thrown more punches. Big right by Corte and a left by Corte. Both men looking for the bomb. Like you're stuck in mud. You got legs, use them. You have better legs than the other guy, use them. When you set him up, let that combination, he covers up. On wood. Can't get pressure now. I'm running now. I'm running Here's the end of that round. Let's go! Right oh, it's... hand by Corte. Not a great punch, but Second in that down. round, enough to tip the balance, perhaps. Oh. Sorry. We head into round eight. It is scheduled for 12. And if people came into this fight thinking that I Corte would be the more mechanical of the two fighters, in truth, it's Oscar De La Hoya, who, as Gil Clancy said in between the corners, you're fighting like your feet are in mud. You have better feet than the other guy. Use them, better legs. But De La Hoya is showing no movement. It's almost as if Oscar De La Hoya is so tense and so tight for this fight 
that he can't get into a fluid movement. Get off of there, keep it up. And if you stand right in front of Mike Corte, you're asking for trouble because he, he can get you with the jab and the left hooks and the right hand. One part of Corte's arsenal that he hasn't been able to use that he wanted to was body shots, but he's been effective in other areas, and there's the jab again. There has been no combination punching from Oscar De La Hoya. There, at least he faints and moves his head. De La Hoya is negating his height and reach advantage by getting so low. Right hand by Corte. De La Hoya keeping his hands low. Corte is three inches shorter than De La Hoya and has two inches less reach. It looks the other way around. The De La Hoya jab is non-existent. Mike Corte is in total control right now in this match. And if he's not dominating De La Hoya, which is a good right by De La Hoya, it doesn't move Corte. Under a minute left to go, 43 seconds. De La Hoya has been so economical with his punches. Can you win throwing this few amount of punches? The answer would seem to be no, but you never know. Corte continues to use the jab, and even when it doesn't land, it disrupts De La Hoya's offense. Good jab by De La Hoya. Sends Corte backward. Here comes De La Hoya, but he walks into a right to the body. 12 seconds left in this round. Oh, 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 don't push, don't push. Step back, watch the heads, come on. A better ending for that round for Oscar De La Hoya, but what about the first two minutes in which he threw Virtually no punches. Oscar, start those combinations to the body. The flashy ones that you use with, no, your, with his mitts. No, give me, give me two, two punches, okay, combinations. Papa, juntale dos golpes. Give me two punches, Papa. Give me the jab, and right after the jab, give me the two, two punches. And you have to be first. He's gonna take it, but no one, no one can be able to control it. One look. Papa, I get very close. One at the end of the round, Oscar De La Hoya used the jab and set up the right hand, and there it was. He has done that so little in this bout. These, of course, are pretty close rounds, but I think most of them are going to Ike Corte, and we'll have to see what the judges say. In a way, this fight is reminiscent of the Cornell Whitaker Oscar De La Hoya fight, where De La Hoya seemed out of sync, but apparently did just enough in rounds to win the round, at least on the judges' scorecard. The right hand by De La Hoya. If De La Hoya needs a blueprint to what he should do, he could look at that replay from the last round or relive it in his mind. Double jab and a straight right hand that he was able to get through the defensive quartet. In truth, it hasn't been a simulating effort by either fighter. Corte's been better. There's what they want from De La Hoya. Even if those are blocked, it's going to score in the judges' minds. That's what Gil Clancy was telling him to do. But part of the reason he doesn't throw those is because Corte comes out of that defensive shell and rocks him sometimes. Better beginning to this round, certainly for Oscar De La Hoya, the defending WBC welterweight champion in his sixth final defense, hoping it's not his last. De La Hoya being more aggressive. Wide punches, though, from De La Hoya. There's Corte with the jab. Corte 
gets there with the left hook. That pesky jab of Corte is keeping Oscar De La Hoya at bay. Look how crouched De La Hoya is. Fighting more crouched than I've seen it against a shorter opponent. And the jab of Corte keeps on coming.
took and lands it. Yes, yes. Forte gets away from those shots. Round 10, a better one for Oscar De La Hoya. Maybe one he won. Laterales, laterales. Que no te gane con el jab, Oscar. Come on, vamos a ir trabajando. Faltan dos rounds nada más, Oscar. El once viene. Mira, calmadito. Just rest and relax. Two more rounds, Oscar. Come on. We need those, those rounds from the bank, okay? Mua. Todo tiene pressure, Juan. Ponulo. Mua. Any pressure. I can't control my jab. I can't. Can't even. Can't even. So go on. Even so, you know, now if you now come, if you come, you see. Ponulo. What will I take from you? From my right is. On. Can I take no joy? On. Can I take no joy? On right. Can I take no joy? The face of Ike Corte and Oscar De La Hoya as we head into the 11th round. Corte comes out throwing the jab as he has throughout this fight. Now there's De La Hoya. Good jabs by De La Hoya, and that gets him in. If there's one serious strategic flaw in this fight, it's that Oscar De La Hoya has not thrown the jab enough or efficiently. That last round was a good one for Oscar De La Hoya. Can he build on it in these last couple rounds? And where is he on the scorecard? I believe Ike Corte is ahead in this match, but that is very unofficial. And many of the rounds have been close. But wide punches by De La Hoya, but Corte now not able to really take advantage of that. But now, in a subtle change, it's De La Hoya who's really throwing more punches than Corte. Mike Corte has slowed down, slowed down a little bit. De La Hoya has been 12 rounds four times twice for Corte, so they know this distance. It has not been a fight filled with dazzling combinations or lots of wild exchanges, but it has had its dramatic moments, like the sixth round when both men were sent down by left hooks, and the ends of several rounds when there have been wild exchanges. A very tough round to judge. Neither man really landing very effectively. Malavoya pressing forward. Corte actually the one pushing the punches out there. Good right and left. Left by De La Hoya, not much landing there, but that flashiness could impress the judges. And he has been more active in the 11th round. Mike Corte can ill afford to let down in the last two rounds, and maybe he has already in this 11th. He doesn't believe he can win a decision against Oscar De La Hoya, and if he doesn't believe it, he better go out and go after him and make it happen. He has let De La Hoya take the play away from him a little bit in these last two rounds, even though they haven't been dominant rounds. Oscar, no me tires la pelea en este round, es el último, ¿ok? Vivo, vámonos, vamos agarrando este round. Ocúpalo, bici, bici. Don't, don't let him out busy yet. You gotta show the judges this round. Can't have a chance, cry. Oh no, oh no, okay. Can't have a chance, cry. Control, more. control. Oh, control, you can't be in a talk, get out of here. Control, more, be no control. Boy, I'm going to make a mistake, cry, 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 c
es el último round. No me tiene la pelea, ¿ok? Seconds out. This fight could very well be on the line. I believe. Oh, there goes Corte from the left hook. Will that be what gets Oscar De La Hoya over the hump? Can he make this a two point round? He knocked Corte down once before, then got careless and got knocked down himself. He's going after Corte. Is that a good strategy? Turn the tide a little bit. It was a memorable 12th round. 
And if the entire fight wasn't wild and wasn't a classic, trust me, it was more than interesting. And equally interesting will be the decision. And trust me, there will be lots of debate, disagreement, and even argument, no matter what it is. And I think as much as anything, the interesting thing will be, what are the margins if there is a victory one way or the other? Many people criticize, well, here's a, Ladies here's and Michael Buffer. Before we go to the Budweiser scorecards, how about a round of applause for the best welterweight fight seen in Las Vegas since Hearns and Leonard. We now go to the Budweiser scorecards. Larry O'Connell scores the bout, 115 to 114. He scores it for Corte. John Keane scores the bout, 116 to 113. He has it for De La Hoya. Ken Marita scores the bout, 116 to 112, for the winner by split decision, and still the undefeated WBC welterweight champion of the world, the Golden Boy, Oscar De La Hoya. So Oscar De La Hoya wins again. I expect a good, clean fight. I want good sportsman like conduct. Oscar, your cup is the trunk's a little high here. The punches here are still good. Your trunks are okay here. Remember guys, I want a clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. And remember guys, I'm fair but firm. Touch him up. One thing to note, Oscar De La Hoya did not look up to the sky where he always has in the past for his uh, dearly departed deceased mother but instead he looked right at Fernando Vargas tonight. And he's had that look since he arrived earlier tonight. And he is ready to go and here we go. 12 rounds of action from Mandalay Bay, Oscar De La Hoya and Fernando Vargas. Vargas in the white trunks, Oscar in the blue and red trunks. First round, Oscar comes out firing the jab. And the question uh, that will be one of the early ones answered, who will dictate the style, who will dictate the tempo of this fight tonight? Many people thought Vargas might come out and start throwing immediately because of all the pent-up anger he has toward this man, but it is Oscar who's going right to work. Good combination upstairs. Vargas has yet to throw a punch. There's one. Vargas insisted, although he has a reputation as a brawler, that he was a smart, intelligent fighter, and he would fight De La Hoya intelligently tonight. The way that he fought by Ike Corte, which was a beautifully executed fight plan by Vargas. He just fired a big right hand and missed the chin of Oscar De La Hoya, who pushes him back a little bit. That could have been a devastating punch should Vargas be able to land it. Good combination from De La Hoya. He has been an aggressor in this round. De La Hoya flashing the speed, so Vargas seeing it here now, and he'll try to time the punches of De La Hoya if he can. De La Hoya cautious, but yet effective with the jab. Up and down, quadrupled up on that jab right there. Floyd Mayweather Sr. has been working with him on his right hand. If you can bet, his left hand continues to be his most powerful punch. A lot of people don't know he is ambidextrous. He plays golf left-handed, so he can turn around and go the other way if he wants to, but he usually prefers not to. I'm interested to see what kind of different style. You know, we haven't seen this guy in a long time. 15 months since Oscar's been in the ring. That's a long time. And it's a, it's, it's a good clinical boxing round by De La Hoya so far. Vargas is just trying to break a sweat, just trying to get warmed up. Vargas trying to counter there, and now he goes on the attack. Oscar's up against the rope. He nearly goes through the ropes and Vargas opens up. He made a mistake there with his footwork and almost slipped out of the ring. Look at that shoulder that De La Hoya. Good left hand from Vargas. De La Hoya's in a bit of trouble right here in the first round. A little bit stiff and Vargas is on him throwing punches. There's another left hand to the head of Oscar De La Hoya. Good right. De La Hoya is just taking punches and then he gives a sort of a grin. He's looking around. 
Very awkward moment on the ropes over there when Oscar Cena loses footing and almost fell out into the celebrities. Well, things were going along just swimmingly for De La Hall, who was reddening along the right side of his face. He's making himself an easy target, it would appear, at this point. And Vargas trying to get a hurry coming back to the end of the line there, and now it gives Vargas a little wink and a little smile. There's a mark definitely in his right cheek. What up? What up? Look at it, man. Look at it. You, you easy to be winning around. You let him get back in the fight. Keep jabbing him and keep moving. You was beating the fight. De La Hoya easy, seemed man. to be very comfortable, and then all of a sudden, he got caught up along the ropes, and that's when Vargas took over the round. Vargas. Pouring it on at this point, and Vargas controlled the round the rest of the way. And he reddened the right side of the face of De La Hoya with a left hook. You can see a little bit of the partial reddening of it there. And by the end of the round, it had started getting pretty bad. De La Hoya got a little awkward over there, Rich. I don't know what was going on. He was going along, fighting the fight, and the jabs. All of a sudden, he drops his gloves. He starts tripping along the ropes, and he pays the price. This thing is on, Rich. Round two scheduled for 12. Fernando may have won that first round with that flurry along the ropes. Floyd Mayweather Sr. wanting Oscar De La Hoya to go back to his jab. He said he let Fernando back in it in that round. We'll see if there's any effects from that redness along the cheek. It shouldn't be much problem. It's not a cut. It's just more or less a little bruise. Vargas doing a very good job of counter punching. First two minutes of the round, I thought De La Hoya had an easy time of it. And then suddenly, Vargas came on. It's like he got crossed up or something over there in the ropes, and then as he was struggling to get out of the ropes, he got caught. And Oscar seemed a little tight to me in trying to kind of get going again at the, at the end of the round. He, he seems tight because he's, he's trying something that I haven't seen him do, and maybe these, all these new styles and Floyd and everything else, he seems to be uh, trying to work on the jab and sticking and moving and oh, okay, okay. more of a classic boxing style. Both fighters pretty equal in power at this point. Vargas leading with the left. That was close inside. Both chins were exposed. You just have to kind of sit here and hold your breath a little bit to see what happens to tell you the truth. Well, I think Oscar De La Hoya is a little cautious there, trying to get his jab going, and now he starts to find his rhythm a little bit. Yeah, he's, he's a little he's a little tight, especially the last part of that last round. Both fighters appear to be in great shape. Vargas also working the jab effectively. Vargas has not, as so many people have suspected, just run across the ring and tried to brawl it out with De La Hoya. He's a powerful puncher. Oscar's felt those punches. No, he's been more cautious than that. most people maybe thought he was going to be. The jab of De La Hoya is effective. I don't know why he abandoned it in the last minute of the first round. And he has not yet followed it up with any kind of rights of any significance. Well, with 30 seconds left to round two, and Fernando goes on the attack, and Oscar sidesteps. All the way across the ring. Now Fernando trying to apply the pressure. Vargas missing a lot of punches here. Reminding me a lot of Trinidad tried to stalk Oscar down in that fight. Now we're getting into a little bit of a shoving match. Joe Cortez did appreciate it. It could get ugly. That won't be the last time. Be careful with his left hand. Get right back to your jab. Your defense is working good. Keep your head moving. 
Get, keep your rhythm going, okay? Keep your rhythm going. Up and down, down and up. Double jab, hook off the jab. Jab, hook, jab. Keep doing different things. You don't want to do the same thing. Keep them confused. Start using the ring something. Make them look for you. Then run them into something. Okay, You're doing good. Yeah. Keep, keep the job. Little blood trickling out of the nose of Oscar De La Hoya. And you can hear what Rick Barada was talking about. Getting in a rhythm and using his jab. A very even fight so far. And a very entertaining one to say the least. Here comes Fernando. Fernando got a little shoving match toward the end of the last round. Now Oscar's gonna open up a little bit. I'm sure it's hard for these guys to resist. I think it's gonna get into that. I really do. We're not playing patty cake tonight, Rich Murata. No, but at least so far they've conducted themselves by like sportsmen in there. There was no re ridiculous antics before the fight in the ring. And they basically fought a clean fight with the exception of that one shove at the end of the uh, second round. It's a little blood from the nose of Oscar De La Hoya. But there's no swelling, it's just a red spot when he got caught up in the ropes in the first round. And you remember when De La Hoya fought Trinidad, and he boxed in that fight, but he boxed with a lot of movement in that fight. Yeah. He is boxing here tonight, Alan, but not with a lot of movement. He's not running around the ring, he's not real mobile, he's not... They just clashed heads. What he's trying to do is stand right in front of Vargas, basically, and make Vargas miss. And he feels he can do that with the new defensive techniques that uh, Floyd Mayweather has taught him. He's holding that left hand pretty low. Maybe he's trying to invite Vargas in. Tries an uppercut there that misses. And you have to wonder about some of his punching accuracy after not being in the ring for 15 months. And certainly that is a factor. It has been in his career in the past, punching accuracy. But I think they're about, it's in the third round now, about halfway through, and I think they're about to get in each fighter in the rhythm. Fernando Vargas is very poised, I'll have to say that, Rick. Yes, he's finding a very controlled fight. No real show of emotion with the exception of that little sneer they had for each other at the end of the second round. Vargas is trying to land the power punches and missing badly. Oscar's still coming back with that jab. If Oscar gets into some kind of rhythm here, he can take over this round. He's, he is often he just a right hand. He is often throwing jab first to the body, then bringing it up to the head. That's Big a right hand. punch. Big right hand just hurt Oscar. Oscar's hurt in the third round. Vargas trying to finish him off, trying to land big punches. Overhand right from Vargas as he continues to press. There's a left hand, a straight left to the face of Oscar De La Hoya. De La Hoya trying to gather himself with 27 seconds left in round three. Oscar suffers a big punch. Now he's trying to fight back on the jab. Now that's what he's depending on. It looks almost like De La Hoya is hoping to win this fight with the jab alone. That won't be enough, I don't think, Alan. No, it won't. And remember I told you his right, he was holding his left hand down pretty low. He got caught with a right over the top. We've already seen more action in three rounds than we did in the full 12 when De La Hoya fought Trinidad. I don't think he has any choice. Breathe in slow, breathe in slow. Breathe in slow, I said, come on now, let's do it. Breathe in slow, and let us slow. How you feel? De La Hoya bruising out there, you see a left hook? And here's when De La Hoya got into some trouble, and Vargas putting it on him, body and head. A lot of body shots in there. Look at the excitement of the crowd. They sensed the De La Hoya's predicament. Not badly hurt by any means, and he came out of there firing the jab, but definitely feeling some of those shots of Vargas. Either one, which one come first? And break with the hook right here, what he said. Watch around, guys. Break with it. Watch around, watch around. Watch around, watch around. I have Felix Fernando Vargas ahead, 29-28 at the end of three rounds. We are hearing round four of a scheduled 12 rounder. Vargas landing a power shot. Last round, crowd reacting to a good jab from Oscar De La Hoya. But the jab's not going to be enough in this fight. Good power shot from Fernando Vargas. Oscar countering now. 
Vargas looks very quick in this fight, Rich. Yes, and strong, too. And he is probably the strongest fighter that Oscar has ever faced. Remember, Oscar De La Hoya has been coming up consistently in weight classes. 130, 135, 40, 47, now 54. Fernando Vargas has been here the whole time. 54. Exactly. Excellent point. Excellent point. Some people question whether or not Oscar had the power at 54 that he had at 47. This is the Fernando's weight. You could, you could actually see his ribs on the back through his back. He's so lean and mean to this fight. Vargas pressing straight ahead. De La Hoya continues to flip the jab. Very, very competitive fight. We're in round four. Fernando Vargas in the white trunks. Oscar De La Hoya in the red and blue trunks. De La Hoya very cautious here. Reluctant to let that right hand go. He's throwing a lot of left jabs and they are effective for him. Especially that particular double jab, which is throwing body and head. Now but where's throwing, the right hand, Alan? I don't know, but he's throwing that jab from down off his hip. I think when he's tried to fire the right hand, he's been countered. Nice uppercut inside. If Fernando felt that good body shot from Oscar. That one may have hurt Fernando a little bit. He took a couple of good right hand. Now Oscar's starting to tee off. Ooh, we got a fight. It's not quiet in here anymore. No. Very accurate punches there from Oscar. He just took a left hand as Fernando decides to throw a jab. Kind of getting into a rhythm here. And he is with his left, but where's the right? He's not throwing it with any conviction. He's showing it once in a while, kind of waving at it for Fernando Vargas, but not throwing it. Twenty seconds left, round four, scheduled for 12. It's been a very high-intensity fight. Vargas is putting relentless pressure on. That's what he wants to do. Pretty good right hand, this snuck in there, Rick. And that was almost the first round of the round. A little bit better round, I thought, for De La Hoya. Bounce back. Hold up, you can start walking or not. Joe, do we get the man the fatigue now? Yeah, you gotta start taking You gotta start pressing him a little bit. Go to okay. him. All right, we take a look at better, much better round for De La Hoya. There you saw that strong right. Look at Vargas, he reacted to it. He crossed his eyes. There it is again. Strong right hand from uh, De La Hoya. And for Vargas kind of yeah, waved his hands out. Coming up. Which one? You're looking good. Start ripping the punches off all together. Walk him down. Huh? Walk him down this round. Right. Close up. Okay, take it down, okay? boss. Good, baby. You're looking good. Well, they're happy over there in the corner. I'm sure much happier after that round than they were after the third. Well, he really listens to Floyd Sr. I mean, he seems to want to follow. He trusts him completely. I've never seen that in Oscar's corner. Oscar would sit there with other trainers and, and just sort of ignore him. But he is really trying to stick to some sort of game plan. I think it got him in trouble in the first round. Now Vargas comes back with a left. And Vargas is pressing the attack. Yeah, he's, he's ripping left hooks. Oscar counters. It's going to get busy here in round five. What we're seeing here tonight is exactly what boxing needs. Two great champions, two in their prime, two promotional companies coming together, top rank and main events, to put on something like this. And you see the result. Good right hand once again from Vargas, who's really pressing the action, but gets backed up off the jab of De La Hoya. De La Hoya is going to have to fire the right. There's a right. They're really swapping here. It's going to be a matter of attrition. Yeah, I was just thinking the same thing. I'm wondering who's going to wear down here. And, uh, and the style that Vargas has showed often has the ability to wear down an opponent. That constant, relentless pressure in your face all the time is a very wearying and fatiguing effect on an opponent. Vargas came prepared for this fight. Great physical condition. I 
I see it. I see some of Mayweather Jr. in the way Oscar's holding his hand. We're seeing a little more blood from the nose of Oscar De La Hoya now. He's the only one marked so far in the fight. And now Vargas is bouncing back this round. Vargas is unloaded now over in the corner. Oscar manages to step out of it. Well, he's going to have to be in great shape to keep this kind of pressure up. We're just in the fifth round out of 12. Well, if nothing else, he's in great shape. He's in great shape. <laughs> Seconds left, round five. It's been Vargas this round with no pressure. The two are making millions tonight, but they're earning them. De La Hoya seems to circle a little bit more as Vargas is going to stand right there. Good right hand from Vargas once again. Those are taking a toll, Rich. De La Hoya not fighting he's back up. right now. He's on the ropes. Now he's on the ropes. Vargas continues to throw. Oscar's standing there taking it. Oscar's not throwing anything. Vargas senses something here, and, and De La Hoya beginning to look a little bit jaded in there. Take a look at that face. There's a lot of blood coming out of his nose just now. That's good, right? Now, come on. Wipe it, give it a note. Give it to someone. Yeah, I'll give it down. It's yours. It's your fight. That's what Eduardo Garcia has told Fernando. You got that as well? You got right in. Take a look at the action from the last round now. Beautiful snapping right hand from Vargas. And a quick follow-up left by Fernando. And De La Hoya not punching back at that juncture. Tried to answer back there. Did land a left-right combination, but Vargas rolled with those Everybody punches. Take some of the starch out of him. Okay? No, don't Watch blow your nose. Watch that face. Don't blow your nose. Don't blow it, don't blow it. All right, Chief, let's go. Ask him. All right, seconds out. Seconds out. With three five rounds, I have Fernando Vargas ahead by a point going to round six. Well, he certainly appeared to take that last round. And here we go to round six, scheduled for 12. Mayweather trying to get his fighter to slow down Vargas a little bit, take some starch out of him, as it were. De La Hoya in the blue and red trunks, Vargas in the white. I think De La Hoya's marked up a little bit. I think his nose is hurting him a little bit because he's been popped in there pretty good. He needs to get that jab to work again. That's his best, most effective weapon, would be the jab to slow down the attack of ferocious Fernando Vargas. Very, very good competitive fight so far. Vargas is gaining confidence, I can see, as it goes along here. Rich. There was a newspaper poll in the local Las Vegas newspaper here today in which media members were polled. 20 picked De La Hoya to win. Only one picked Vargas to win. I wonder if you re-polled those same 21 now, what the score would be. be a little bit different. In round six, nearing the halfway point of round six, Fernando Vargas has slowed down a little bit in this round. He has a tendency in this fight to come on in the last minute, though. Oscar is definitely in a defensive posture with this man right now. Well, and if he's going to be, then he should be jabbing. If he's going to move, he needs to jab. Jab right there. Crippled up on him. Now he's moving up on his toes a little bit. That's more reminiscent of the Trinidad fight. That's how he befuddled Trinidad for most of the first eight rounds. The boxing exhibition by De La Hoya here. Now I see some blood on. Fernando Vargas' right side, his right cheek above the cheekbone. 
I don't know if that's from Oscar or maybe he's opened up a little I, cut there. I don't think so. I think he's at least bruised under that eye. And De La Hoya is boxing a brilliant round. His best round so far, 25 seconds left. De La Hoya doing the things he needs to do to counter the power of Fernando Vargas that he showed in the sixth or the fifth round. Now Vargas is busted open underneath the uh, right eye, it looks like. Starting to bleed pretty heavily. And that tells you what the effect of that jab has been. It's been a beautiful jab. He's busted open really well now. There's a big cut. Clinic by De La Hoya in that round. He landed a punch after the bell, and Fernando goes, what was that? There was Vargas' two big punches right at the end of the round, two left hooks, but De La Hoya with the punch right after the round. Vargas sneering at him. Until those two punches, though, by Vargas at the end of the round, I thought that De La Hoya had had a big round. I think what he's doing is it's a, it's a heck of a thing to ask a guy to keep up that kind of pace. If Oscar could keep up that kind of style and that pace, you're going, to see, you're going to see Vargas getting a little winded in this thing. You're already beginning to see it now. In that round, I thought Oscar started gaining some confidence. But I would dare say, I guess, and only a guess, this fight's probably dead even. That is how I have it at this point. A dead even fight. Here we go, round seven. Alternating rounds, basically. Round seven for Mandalay Bay. We'll see if now if Vargas can counter like he did in the fifth round when he started putting on the pressure. De La Hoya seems to be gaining more confidence in his boxing. And, and I, I could, I could only guess that maybe the touching heads. Joe Cortez warns him against the headbutts. Try to keep it out of there because we don't want to have this fight stop on the headbutt, Rich. I, I, I just had a sense that Oscar, after not fighting for 15 months, is finally in the seventh round or sixth round, maybe starting to get his legs a little bit more. Well, we felt that the layoff would uh, affect him more than it would Vargas, who was off about a year. Due to the fact that he depends more on being really precise and sharp in the ring, De La Hoya. Swelling under the right eye now of Vargas. Looks like that swelling is going to push up underneath the right eye. And De La Hoya working on it with the jab. De La Hoya fighting a nice round here up on his toes, trying to put on a little bit of a show. Now we've got a little showmanship going on. Both fighters are into it. Absolutely, gamesmanship. There you see the blood, though, coming out of that cut. The cut, though, is not dripping into the eye, remember. It, it's going to look bad, but it's not dripping into the eye to inhibit vision. What might inhibit his vision is the quick swelling underneath the eye of Vargas. Vargas just landed a pretty good right there, but Oscar was able. Oscar's got, you know, I can see the work that Mayweather's done with him. His defensive skills, in my opinion, are definitely better, Rich. Just wish we could, he could get more of the right hand in if that's, if that's part of his technique. We can see what that could do. Hasn't used it a lot tonight, but his jab has been a thing of beauty. That, that little cut's beginning to be more and more of a problem. Over there, under the left eye. Funny, they're both used in about the exact same spot. Yeah. So that's the kind of fight it's been. Crowd getting a little raucous here. And you know Vargas, with one minute in the round, as I said, has been his pattern. Might get a more busy. Good punch inside. Now Oscar throws the right and comes back with a counter. And Vargas says, bring it on. Blood in the mouth of Oscar De La Hoya. Good right hand over the top, but Vargas takes it. Vargas needs to be careful because De La Hoya is beginning to dominate here. Now Oscar's opened himself up to a lot of punches, too. He's, he's got his hand. I've never seen him hold his hand down there like that. Yeah, but he's, he's confusing Vargas as to where he's going to throw the jab to with his hand down there now. He's throwing it to the body sometimes, to the head sometimes, and Vargas doesn't know where it's going. 20 seconds left, round seven. That's what Mayweather told him. Give him different looks. Don't let him know where it's coming from. And Vargas, in the last two rounds, has not been able to do what he'd like to do. Oscar looking much better, Rich. Yeah, that's the first time in the fight that I think one man has won two straight rounds. How you feel? Now we get okay. into the... I need you to run some combinations off, man, because right now, this man is out of it, man. You run them combinations three or four times from the body to the head. Give me two good combinations. 
There's De La Hoya really beginning to get that jab working to some good effect. And now the two of them, here's the gamesmanship part. The both of them showboating a little bit. Nice left by, by De La Hoya. On the move, too, Alan. Strong right hand by Oscar. Now if that one had connected on the chin, would have been goodbye. And Vargas not answering. Oh, up, right. Let's go, guys. Let's go, Joe. Joe, let's go. They told Vargas, don't just stand in the middle of the ring. If Oscar has turned this fight around in his favor, it is because of his superior boxing skills in the ring. And we'll see. We're getting to the business end of this fight, Rich Murata. Eighth round. We'll see if it goes 12. But this is when they separate the men from the boys from the other boxers. It's starting to get to be serious business. Fernando's still in the middle. Good right hand from Oscar. That's what you've been calling for. Another good right hand. The crowd really reacted. First time he showed him like that. Back to back right. Following the jab. Taylor Hall definitely in the rhythm. And this is a very dangerous time for Vargas. Because as I mentioned in the last round, De La Hoya beginning to dominate. Vargas has got to put something on him to get De La Hoya out of that rhythm. De La Hoya flashing the, the jab and faking another right hand dead on the cheekbone. The right hand has come to life in round eight as long as De La Hoya doesn't do anything dumb. He almost slipped up right there. Punch, a little punch south of the border there from Vargas. Crowd starting to chant Vargas, Vargas. And the, the Vargas fans are a larger number here trying to encourage a man who may need a little encouraging right now. Well, whatever ring rust Oscar had in the first four rounds is gone. We have him winning the last two rounds. Vargas not good. There he is out front where he can be hit. Rich, he can be hit right there in the middle of the ring if he stays there. Look at the confidence growing in Oscar De La Hoya. And, and what you don't see is the relentless pressure from Vargas anymore. Look at Vargas backing off a little or a little side to side movement, not coming forward. He was the man initiating all the action. He was coming forward. Look at it now. De La Hoya showing tremendous boxing skills in his last three rounds. Vargas looks worried to me. Good body punches, good combinations. Vargas looking for a spot to unload. De La Hoya comes back with a right hand. Vargas trying to counter. Good right hand for De La Hoya. De La Hoya can't get reckless, however. He's okay. in complete control right here, but he cannot get reckless. It would be a dumb thing to do. He has a tendency to do that sometimes. Remember Vargas and everything he said about, I'd rather die in that ring than lose to De La Hoya. It's either win or die trying. I mean, he's going to go with every ounce that he has. And if De La Hoya gets reckless, it could be trouble. And he's had a very good breaking down of Fernando Vargas in the last three rounds. 30 seconds left, round eight. Blood streaming from the cheekbone of Fernando Vargas, who looks a little bit confused and dazed at points in this round. Not as strong, as effective as he was in round five. From then on, it's been all De La Hoya. Final seconds, round eight. What a great display of boxing skills from Oscar De La Hoya in this round. De La Hoya's taking charge. De La Hoya's taking charge. Yep, he's in command. It's all Oscar De La Hoya now. Fernando needs for something dramatic to happen to turn it around. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. And we'll take a look at some of the action. De La Hoya dominating with speed. You saw the straight right hand from De La Hoya. He's following the jab. He's hiding that right hand behind the jab nicely. Left, there's the right again. Happened several times. Boxing's old one, two. Yeah, and the right hand is so quick that Fernando has to pick it off. Too many voices, too many voices there. Right, Everybody's screaming at Vargas in his corner. He looks confused a bit, but you know what? This thing is far from over, Rich Murata. We're going to the ninth round. I think this is a long way from over. There's going to be some fireworks. We'll see if Vargas can turn it around in this round. We'll see if Oscar is in good enough shape to hold off a man who's in the best shape of his life, Fernando Vargas from Oxnard, California. His whole life he's trained for this. There's that right hand. He's chopping away at him. Not even Trinidad could do this to uh, Vargas. 
with the combinations. Could have had knocked him around five times, knocked him down, but he didn't face this kind of jab with the combination. Now Oscar covering up. This is what Vargas needs. De La Hoya giving him a little opening here, a little window of opportunity, and Vargas beginning to put some pressure on, and that's what he's got to do. Not the same Oscar so far in round nine. Looking the jab. You think he maybe needs to try to take a round off? Is that what he's doing? I don't that's suspect that's smart. what he would do. That's not smart. He's standing there covered up and letting Vargas throw the right hand again and again and again. Vargas trying to unload and Oscar just taking it. Scintillating fight. An excellent fight. That's a good right hand. A chopping right by De La Hoya. Those are taking effect, but when he, when he goes to that cover-up position, to me, it hasn't worked unless he's trying to get Vargas winded or tired. Now, but I don't think it's going to happen. De La Hoya's lost his rhythm in this round. Look at he's not he's not up, he's not jabbing, he's not bouncing around. He's completely lost his rhythm. Well, halfway through the ninth round, and it's turned around in Vargas' favor here. Vargas, this is what we saw back in the fifth round from Vargas. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Pushing Oscar into the ropes. Backing him up, Oscar not countering. Now Oscar back up on his toes, but he's not throwing the jab like he was. He lead right hand. Combination, Oscar looked a little tired. I thought De La Hoya had taken complete command and Vargas is surprising me in this round. It, it means too much to Fernando for him to just roll over that. He's not going to. That's what he needs to do. Oscar needs to come back with that jab. It's been so effective, he keeps him back. It's coming down to conditioning here. Oscar takes a hard body punch. That punch, that counter from Oscar hurt. There's the jab, and throwing the right hand. Chopping right hands. Vargas trying to find an opening, any opening to the body so he can throw his big punches. Oscar not letting him get off the big punch. There's a spot where Oscar doesn't want to be in the corner as he jabs his way out of the corner. That's what he's got to do, turn around and jab his way out. But he has gotten out of his game plan in this round. 15 Mayweather. seconds left in round nine. Be interested to see what Mayweather says to Oscar in the end of this round. More blood for Fernando Vargas. Oscar throwing punches, final 10 seconds. Last 30 seconds were better for De La Hoya, but was it enough to win the round? I don't think so. You won that round, Fernando. That's what you've got to do. All right. It's 10th round. How you feel? All right. See that right hand? Everything complete. In this round, we saw Vargas go back to his pressure tactics, putting it to the body and head, landing some corking. He's fighting on instinct. He ain't got nothing. Keep doing like you're doing, us, okay? And, and, you ain't got to lay up on the ropes and stuff no more. Just whoop his ass from my side, okay? <laughs> well, that's what I was saying, the whole... Uh, Ninth round, he doesn't need to be laying on the ropes. Here we go, 10th round, scheduled for 12 from Mandalay Bay, Las Vegas. What a fight it has been. Oscar De La Hoya and Fernando Vargas. Vargas putting the pressure on in round nine as we head into the later rounds. Who has the most stamina? Who can make it? Vargas said he'd rather die than lose to De La Hoya. De La Hoya flipping the jab. Doing what he has to do. Mayweather employing his fighter to beat him from the outside. He doesn't need to be on the ropes. De La Hoya looking to get that rhythm back. When he has his rhythm, he pops up on his toes and he pops that jab. A double puts a jab with it. He's looking for it. He lost it completely in that last round. De La Hoya having trouble breathing. His nose has been tagged and we've seen it dripping the entire fight just about. So he's breathing through his mouth. It's back to relentless pressure for Vargas. Vargas keeps coming across. But he can't get wild. Tenth round. What a fight it has been. Then Ahoya continues to throw the jab at Vargas. Vargas looking to land a big punch. Neither man able to take control of this round so far.
left hook by De La Hoya. As he, he caught that right hand and didn't throw it. He thought better of it. It's a nice left hook counter by De La Hoya. I thought he had more success with that here tonight. Vargas continues to apply the pressure with the footwork, but he's not quite able to apply the pressure with the punches. De La Hoya will make a stand somewhere on the outside and try to keep flicking that jab. Vargas' jab is not existing. I think his round's still up for grabs with a minute to go here. One minute to go in the round 10 scheduled for 12. We'll see who can keep up the pressure. And I would have been. to think, Alan, this is a very close fight, and so I think this is a very important minute I right think, here. Exactly. I think this is the most crucial minute of the fight we're watching right now, folks. De La Hoya, blood's dripping from his nose, having trouble breathing. It's been a problem throughout the fight. Vargas swelling under his right eye. They've been able to keep it under check. De La Hoya really pouring blood now from his nose. Vargas keeps up that pressure. Keeps up that pressure. Good counter for De La Hoya. 30 seconds, under 30 seconds left. I don't think anyone's taking control of this round. And that scrape right over that uh, cut again. And left hook by De La Hoya. Good right hand from De La Hoya. Blood pouring out of his nose. Good combination. This side, he's staggered Vargas. He's staggered him with his quickness. And with a big power punch in the final seconds. Wow. That was scary. First time in the fight that one man was really rocked and close to going down. Going down. You know where he at now? You know where he at? Smart, you get it? Smart. You know where he at now? Huh? Got him hurt. He tagged him. Don't go to no one. It's 11 round, round, baby. It's all yours. He's all yours now. You know what Let's see what happened. It was that left hook. A, left, a little inside left hook from De La Hoya. There it is. And with Fernando, the pain on his face, and his legs betray him as he staggers back. And. Vargas perhaps wearying now from this pitched battle. Finally showing the effects of a single punch. In this case, a left hook landed by De La Hoya. We've got two rounds to go. I don't think the judges will score that a 10-8 round, however. No, they won't. It happened at the end. I don't think they will either. I think this thing's still up for grabs. Vargas certainly has his attention peaked by what just happened. De La Hoya with the quickness. His quickness has been a big factor, especially in that exchange. Floyd Mayweather was telling him, well, you know where you got him now, which I thought was basically telling him you can, you can take him out. We'll see. We'll see how Vargas bounces back. Sometimes this little sit on the stool brings you right back. De La Hoya cannot afford to be too cautious. It's been but, an exquisite fight, though. It's been an excellent fight. Both guys show a tremendous heart. They came to do business. They gave the people what they paid for. But we got a long way to go. Round 11 of a scheduled 12. I can't believe De La Hoya is not jumping right on him. De La Hoya seems to be holding back for some reason. Oscar had him close to knocked out in the last round, and he just, he's not jumping on him. I think Vargas is more cautious than ever. More cautious than any round in round 11 here. Now he's cautious. There it is! There it is! Vargas is down! Vargas is down! It's stunned! Joel De La Hoya, the brother of, De, of Oscar, jumped up on the ring apron. He could get Oscar De La Hoya to disqualify. The commission told him to get down. Dumb move in the corner, but Oscar trying to finish up now. Round 11. He put Vargas down. He almost put him down at the end of round 10. No time to be careless. He's got him going backwards. De La Hoya's got him going backwards. He now he's got Vargas in the corner. Four punches. And Joe Cortez ends the fight. Joe Cortez has ended the fight. He didn't want to see Vargas take any more punishment in the corner. It is deafening in here. Listen to this roar. The best. The best of De La Hoya. Absolutely, and I think what we have just seen, finally, at long last, is Oscar De La Hoya's defining fight. The best of De La Hoya. I 
am impressed, Rich. What a difference the combinations Mayweather brought to this young man. The jab, the quickness, the speed, and then when he saw the opening, pouncing. Bloodied but unbowed, De La Hoya scraped on the right cheek, bleeding from the nose, but taking control of the fight. And really a brilliant performance in the end. Now you see the first knockdown. Down goes uh, Vargas, and I mean he went down hard. Flat on his back. It's that left. The left hand, which he really turned over. Very short, just beautifully, crisply flown. Turned it over as he was throwing it. Nicely done. I mean, and then De La Hoya went after it. And this is what he was dreaming of. Oh, he just put a pounding on him in the corner, Rich. And I think Joe Cortez did the right thing. No one can argue with that stoppage of the fight. No doubt. A magnificent performance by Oscar De La Hoya. A gallant performance by Fernando Vargas in defeat. <laughs> Woo! Place went nuts. People have wanted for 10 years to see this for Oscar De La Hoya. Now they got it. So Oscar could say, how do you like them apples, folks? I really felt that we've never seen the defining fight of De La Hoya's career. That one that De La Hoya at the end of his career could say, look, this is the fight. This was what I was all about. This was the defining fight of my career. And I think we've seen it here tonight for Oscar De La Hoya. What a seeing him and Floyd Sr. I tell you what. Was, I had a really close fight. <laughs> at, the, at, the end of the, uh, at the end of the fight, I had it 96, 94 for uh, Oscar De La Hoya, which would have been the six rounds before at the end of time. Let me tell you something, Rich. He has learned by getting... Let's go to Michael Buffer now for the official announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, here at the Mandalay Bay, before we announce the official time, a round of applause for two great champions that came here to face each other tonight, Fernando Vargas and Oscar De La Hoya. The end comes at 48 seconds of round number 11. The winner by knockout victory, and now the unified champion from East L.A., the golden boy, Oscar De La Hoya.